Westminster. All for Hope under Chester's Connecticut, Tachester, Yuckwoodeen and Newminster. Go to number five platform. Ticket. I've lost my ticket. Stand back, Master, please. Please, I... We're just going to shunt the train. I seem to have lost my ticket. Did you have it when they punched tickets at Blenavon? Um, yes, but I'm going on to Condicote. Well, you better explain there. The Condicote train's about to leave. Number five platform. Well, yes, but... <laughs> Hello, boy. Good boy, then. Ah, young master. Down, boy. I see that my Barney dog has made friends with you at first sight. It's, that's the time that likings are made. Then you're looking for your ticket, which, low is on the platform dropped at your feet. Hi, so it is. Thanks so much. You must have slipped it out as you rumpaged. Could I give you a hand, please, to help you carry your case? No, I thank you, Master, but I do have a body like the ghost of Nightwind, so if you would be kind enough to steady her when I swing her, then I could get her onto my back, which is where she rides a triumph. So, if you would be so gracious... Indeed, sir. Only I do... I do date from pagan times, and age makes my joints to creak. <laughs> Or doesn't it? All aboard! I should think it does. Train right now leaving platform five for Hope on the Chesters, Condigate, Tachester, Yuckwoodine and Newminster. You better hurry, Master Kay. How did he know my name? of Delights by John Macefield. Dramatized in two parts by John Peacock with music by Neil Brand. Part one, When the Wolves Were Running. Taken. No, sir. Uh, oh. oh. <laughs> well, young master, going home for the school holidays, haha, <laughs> what? Yes, please, sir. And very seasonable weather, too. We'd have snow, it seems. Yes, sir. No doubt you're looking forward to snowballing, tobogganing, making snowmen. I wonder if in the Christmas holidays you will do any card tricks. If you please, sir, I don't know any. Perhaps I might teach you a simple trick, since we are to be fellow travellers. Well, that would be very kind, sir, but I'm afraid I wouldn't be very good at it. I see that you would be very good at it. Don't you think, Tristan, that he has the face of one certain to be clever at card tricks? What? The very face. Just the facial angle and the Borromean index. Yeah. Now, let me see. I, I usually carry cards because we curates are much alone and find the games of patience a great mental solace. Yeah. Ah, yes. I have my old companions. Let nothing tempt you into playing cards with strangers in a train or ship anywhere. I am inclined to agree with you, Lancelot, but there will be no harm in showing him one of the tricks by which sharpers deceive the unwary. Uh, let me show you the commonest trick. It is often known as spotting the lady. Mm. See there. Mark them well. I twist them and shift them. And lo, now, which is the lady? That one. Oh, so it is, so it is. <laughs> what it is to have young eyes, Gawain, is it not? <laughs> it was not his young eyes, but your clumsy dealing. Ah, I lack practice, I see. I must give myself some incentive. I will back my skill. Now then, prepare. If you beat me this time, you shall have sixpence. For indeed, I must be put up on my metal. Can you tell the lady this time? Yes, here she is. 
Oh. Oh. And here is your sixpence. <laughs> oh. You have an eye like a lynx. <laughs> now, may I try once again? You are too young, you are too sharp. There is no getting round you. Now, no deny. If I beat you this time, you shall give me half a crown for the poor box. But I promise never to bet. No, 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 of course, it would not be a bet. Oh, no, 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 no. Simply sportsman's honour. Agreed, agreed. Now, which is the lady? This one. I saw her from underneath as the cards went down. <gasps> oh. The three of hearts. Oh. oh, now how did that happen, what? <laughs> that will be just half a crown, please, <laughs> for the poor box. A debt of honour, you know. So you carry your money in a purse. So much better than having it loose when it may get pulled out with a handkerchief. Ha <laughs> ha, what? <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, one florin and one sixpence. Oh. <laughs> what is this uh, countryside we're passing through? Over there, that's Condicut Church. Then that wooded hill is King Arthur's Court. Oh. It's a Roman camp. Oh. And up there is Broadbarrow, where there used to be a gibbet. Oh. Indeed. Well, well. Uh, then uh, this next station will be Condicut, I take it? Yes. You hear that, Palamedes? Sir Lancelot says that Condicate is next stop, where the hawks get out to wait for the chicken, if the chicken is still on the wing. What? What's that? The old man's dog. One of the friends of man, as they are called. Ha <laughs> what? And, uh, do you keep dogs at Seeking's house? H how do you know that's my home, sir? Magic, Master K. <laughs> Oi, how you have grown to be sure, Master K. Well, learning seems to suit you. Take the bags to the car, will you, Jim? I will indeed. Oh, no. I say, Caroline Louisa, there must have been a pickpocket in the crowd. Oh, my purse and my watch have gone. When did you last have them? A few minutes before we reached the station. Did you notice any suspicious person near you? Well, no, but... Hello. Here's my ticket. It can't be. You gave it up just now. I know I did. Well, that's very odd. I thought I'd lost it once before at Musborough, and an old man found it for me. That fellow over there, see, with the green case and the Irish terrier. Is he a Punch and Judy man? He looks like one. I don't know, but I'd better make sure this ticket isn't his. Excuse me, sir. Did you give me your own ticket at Musborough by mistake? No, no, no. I thank you. I had my own. <laughs> now I've given it over. Oh. My guardian wondered, sir, if you were a Punch and Judy man. I am. Um... So to speak, showman, my Barney dog is, as it were, my Toby dog when chance does call, but the secrets of my show, they're not to be had by anyone. Can I help you, sir? Would you like a lift into town? No, I think, Master Harker, but there is one way you can help me. Now that the wolves are running, perhaps you would do something to stop their bite, or wouldn't you? I don't know what you mean, sir. But Master Harker, there is something that no other soul can do for me but you alone. As you go down towards Seekings, if you would stop at Bob's shop, as it were, to buy uh, muffins, you will see a woman plaited from the cold wearing a ring of a very strange shape, Master Harker, being like my ring here. And she has very bright eyes, Master Harker. As bright as mine, which is what few have. If you say to this lady, the wolves are running, then she will know, and others will know, and none will get bit. But say nothing of this to anyone, not even your guardian. I'll do that, of course. But how did you know my name? When wolves run, it betides to know, Master Harker. And I do bless you. But hurry! Time and tide and buttered eggs wait for no man. About your being robbed, who was with you in the train? Two men, but I don't think they would have robbed me. They were sort of clergymen. The funny thing was, they knew that I came from Seekings. They could have read that from your luggage labels. They're probably from the missionary college at Chester's. You're sure they didn't rob you? Quite. I say, 
Caroline Louisa, are there any muffins at home? Tea cakes, I think, but no muffins. Would you mind frightfully if we stopped at Bob's and got some? We'll stop, but we mustn't be long. Ellen's preparing buttered eggs for lunch. Buttered eggs? Especially for you. Time and buttered eggs wait for no man. Stop off at Bob's for a moment, will you, Jim? Yes, ma'am. Listen, I've something else to tell you. A surprise. The Jones children are with us for the holidays. The Joneses? Their parents have to go abroad, and I couldn't bear them to have nowhere to go for Christmas, so I invited them to join us. I hope you won't mind. I don't mind at all. I like the Joneses. There's rather a gollop of them, though. I'm putting Peter into your room. The girls can have the old nursery. It should be fun, especially if there's snow. We hold deep snow so that we can make a snowman. Put here we are. I'll wait outside and look in some shop windows while you get the muffins. I shall be long. An old woman, cladded from the cold. There she is. That must be her. Excuse me. I'm to tell you, the wolves are running. Come along, Kay. Yes. Who was that you were talking to? An old lady with the brightest eyes I've ever seen. That sounds like police dogs. Hunting. Alsatians. I never like them. They're too much like wolves. Jolly good tucker, Kay. Buttered eggs are my favourite. Yes. I like the muffins. They were all right, but I would have preferred lamb chops. You shouldn't say things like that, Mariah. It's impolite. Well, it's true. The muffins were Kay's suggestion. We bought them in Condicut. I've been thinking, Caroline Louisa, what an ass I was not to ask that Punch and Judy man here to give a show. Do you think I might invite him? Surely, if you can find him, and if he agrees. Well, Peter and I could help set up his booth in the library. Yes, good idea. I'll get Ellen to light a fire. What do you all say? Susan? Jemima? I've never seen the Punch and Judy show. Then I vote we have tea at about half past four and invite him at half past five. I'll go down to Conducate now while you're settling in. Punch and Judy. I'll see if I can find him. Christmas ought to be brought up to date. It ought to have gangsters and aeroplanes and a lot of automatic pistols. Don't take too long, Kay. There's a storm brewing. I won't. You've got gangs and guns on the brain, Mariah. And stay away from the lower locks. They're more exciting than Punch and Judy, men. Harker. They tell me that wolves are running. Who are you? If you see someone, say someone is safe. I will, sir. And look out for fun, Master Harker. If I see someone, tell him that someone's safe. I suppose he must mean the Punch and Judy man. But where? The lower <laughs> lock, Master Harker! The lower lock! I told Caroline Louise I... The lower locks. Where are you going, Kay? Dinger! What's he want? He's a dinger! Please, do you know where the Punch and Judy show went? What? <laughs> dinger! Where did it go? He's gone! Do you know where to? Get the others! We'll show him! He went along! Never said I mean. Up this way, was it? Could give you a cup of tea, could. <laughs> dinger! Wolves! He didn't, sir! But did he go this way? Don't! Don't touch you, eh? I don't no. Please. Did you see a man with a Punch and Judy show? Well, I saw a man go. Did he a Punch and Judy show with him? Well, I don't know. What does he want? I don't know. The man with the... With... Give us a name, Ninja. And he's come. Be brave, Master Key. Face them, and the wolves will run. Spare us a cup. <laughs> Give us a break. It's astounding. Ninja. The Punch and Judy Man is no longer here, Master Kay. He's gone up to cock farthings to the Drop of Dew Tavern. The Drop of Dew? It's Mr. Cole Hawlings you'll be wanting. Cole Hawlings? The Punch and Judy Man. Oh, yes. You'll find him in the snug, alone. He says he was expecting a visitor. Where is the snug, sir? Through yon door. Thank you, sir. Ah, 
Master K, come. If you please, Mr. Hollings. Come in. Please, sir. Mm -hmm. If I saw someone, I was to tell him that someone is safe. Ah. But I say that's more than anyone knows when wolves are running, Master Hucker. Please, will you tell me what you mean by wolves, sir? If you keep looking out for fun, you will see the wolves as like as not. Or won't you? I don't know. Uh, but now, Master Hucker, you want me to go up to see Kings with my punch and my duty at half past five? Yes, but how did... Uh, darling, I will be there. And perhaps maybe I'll bring more than my punch and my duty for a travelling man collects as he goes. Nor doesn't he? I should think he would. Ah, ah. you would think he would. Hmm. You're one that thinks right then. Hmm? And now, Master Harker, as I've heard tell that you're fond of birds, maybe you will tell me what bird you'd like best to see of all the birds there are. There is a bird that I'd like to see. But I'm afraid it doesn't really exist. Ah, 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 but perhaps it does exist, Master Hacker, to those who wish to see it. Hmm? Come, sit by me. Thank you, sir. Now, look into the fire. See the desert sand. Have diamonds. Now, look, look, look. Spice tree. Smell the spice upon it. Yes. I say, are they the pyramids? The, 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 the tree. Look closely at the tree. See the nest of cinnamon sticks. Yes. And a phoenix. It's a phoenix. And now I can say I have seen one. How the plumes change from white to gold as each feather becomes a flame. See how she is consumed by her own flames. Mm. Watch now, Master Haka. The embers. See the embers. I can't see any. Don't watch, 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 watch. An egg. Shh, 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 shh. There. That is the bird you were afraid didn't exist. Yes. <laughs> so, Master Hucker, you shall see me at Seekings with my punch and my Judy and my little dog Toby at one half after five. Hmm? In this magic box that I carry about with me. I have other delights, but perhaps you shall see that later when you have met my punch and my duty. That's the way to do it. Go do it, boy, Go do it, boy. Go do it. Don't forget poor old punch. <laughs> Thank you, dear. And now, Master Harker and friends, now that I've played my play, I'll play some more. For a travelling man collects as he goes. <laughs> or doesn't he? He does. Ah, he does, the bright Miss Mariah says. He collects, and what he collects, he shows. And you, Miss Mariah, I'm told you're fond of guns. Hmm? So, shall I see what will happen if I blow... This tiny bugle. But first, I must tap the wainscot to see if there's any gate there. There isn't. No, 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 no. Patience, Miss Mariah. But there isn't. First, I must blow the bugle.
guys. That was, that was it was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you've been pleased with my shows, I'll be taking my way. <laughs> this bounty dog, what is it? Carousels and very good ones. Bounty dog. They came up very quietly. I didn't hear a single step. It's deep snow already. They've got Japanese lanterns. What's a Japanese lantern? You can see through the window. Look. That's not the Condicate Choir. Who are they? It's the Cathedral Choir from Tachester. There are the canons. And that's the bishop himself, isn't it? Let's go through to the hall. Is everything all right, Mr. Cole? Who, who can tell? You go ahead, Master King. My Barney Dog and I will follow. No, no, I thank you, Caroline Louisa. The Sea King's house is the last stop on our tour. We must be thinking of getting back. <laughs> but we shall meet again soon, I hope. I want you all to come tomorrow night to the Palace of Touchester. Oh. We are having a children's party with Christmas tree oh. at five o'clock, and I shall expect you all. <laughs> thank you, Bishop. We shall be delighted. Yes. Is it a big Christmas tree? With presents? <laughs> Shh, Jemima. <laughs> yes, with presents. And I shall, of course, see you all at the midnight service on Christmas Eve. We will certainly be there, Bishop. There's been a midnight celebration every Christmas Eve in Tachester Cathedral since its foundation, 1,000 years ago. We wish this anniversary to be really memorable, a landmark in the history of the county. We would love to come. Miss Maria? Oh, yes. I'm very interested in stained glass, above all church things. <laughs> yes, I, I think I've seen that face before. Aren't you the famous Punch and Judy man, Cole Hawlings? You've seen me uh, many times. Yes, Your Grace. At this party tomorrow, we shall have a great many children. Would you come and play for them? Oh, no, right gladly. I'll bring my Punch and my Judy and my Toby Dog, for I played a Christmas play on that night ever since. Pagan times, hmm? so to speak. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, will you be at the palace at half past four, then? <laughs> Tomorrow? Good. And now, good night to you all. Good night. A Merry Christmas and a most Happy New Year, and many, many thanks for your most warm welcome. It's all right, Barney. Fisher. <laughs> we were just too late for your concert. <laughs> what? Don't stop at that door, Master Kay. You'll catch cold. <laughs> good night, <laughs> Mr. Hollings. <laughs> good night. Shush. Good morning, Doc. Until tomorrow. Tomorrow. Telephone call, Miss Caroline Louisa. I'm coming, Ellen. Back up, Kay. We're ready for pirates. All right, in a minute. I just want to pop into the library. <laughs> Mr. Hollings. <laughs> So, Master Harker, we always used to say it's the snow that brings the wolves out. Many a bitter night did we stand the wolf guard. Now, here, once more, they're running. We must stand to our spears. Everything's all right. You, you saw those men who were late. Have you seen them before? Two of them were on the train. Where did they go? I think they went with the choir, but I couldn't see. No, no. my barley dog knows. They're still here. The wolves are here. If I had time, Master Kay, I might best them, but they run me close with their new magic, which I can't guard myself against. So what are you going to do? A way out. I must find a way out of their ring of magic. A way out before they break in. Master Harker, what is the picture yonder? That winter scene. It's a drawing of a Swiss mountain. It was done by my grandfather. And uh, if you, with your young eyes, will look, perhaps you will kindly tell me if there's a path on it. Quickly, I must escape the wolves. Through the blizzard, I can see a path. And alongside, a, a torrent of water. Yes. Yes, yes. And yonder, down the path, do I see a mule? Yes. Help me. Onto the mule, if you will, Master Kay. Steady there. Uh, thank you. Now, if you would give me Toby. Uh, uh, thank you. My dog Toby and myself wish you a most happy Christmas. Uh, Get up. I do hope you'll escape the wolves. Don't see me again. Uh. Kay. 
Okay. That telephone call just now. My brother in London's been taken ill. Oh, I'm sorry. And there's no one to look after him. Are you all right? You look as though you've seen a ghost. No, no, nothing's wrong, Caroline Louisa. Well, I'm afraid I shall have to be with him tonight. Are you sure nothing's wrong? Yes, definitely. Definitely sure. Only, I'll have to catch the seven o'clock train. I hate to leave you on the first night of the holidays, but I hope it won't be for more than just tonight. Or perhaps tomorrow night as well. I say, I really am sorry. Of course you must go. I've told Jim to take me to the station. I'll see you off. It's an awful night. I hope your train won't be snowed up. Even with the chains are slithering the drifts. So let's toss up for who should be captain. One of you's got to be a merchant man and walk the plank. No, let's be Christmas pirates and put all our treasure into poor people's stockings and let nobody know who did it. I say, of all the sickly sentiments. It's a jolly good Christmas sentiment. Well, I didn't dress up as a pirate to have Christmas sentiment. <coughs> Shh, hold on a minute. What? I believe there's somebody just outside that window. I expect it was only snow falling. No, somebody coughed. There are probably a lot of foul little boys trying to peep in at the window. I'm going to open it. Good evening, my young friends. We could not make anybody here. Uh, this is the house called uh, Seeking's House. Ha <laughs> ha, what? <laughs> Do you want Caroline Louisa? I am afraid. You will think that what I want is very absurd. Uh, we were given to understand that a man called uh, Hawley Hawley, a uh, punch and Judy showman, is here. Were we not, Tristan? Indeed we were. Yes. There was a punch and Judy showman, but he's gone. Gone? How long has he been gone? He went away to the Tatchester Choir. <laughs> they went off in a motor bus, what? I don't know how they went off. And so we miss him once more. Uh, this man is known to have versions of the play which they played and other versions still older which are not played. Uh, and we do most earnestly want to meet him. Yes. And now he is off to this wild life of the roads in weather like this where a, a touch of pneumonia or a, a passing van may wipe out his knowledge forever. forever. You would get him at Tatchester. The bishop asked him to give a performance there tomorrow. Ah, so uh, that uh, fixes him to Tatchester. What? Uh, may I ask, where is the gentleman known as Young Master Harker? I don't know where he is at the moment. Probably upstairs somewhere, dressing up. And uh, this little friend is your sister, I take it? I may be little, but I'm not a friend of yours, and you may take it or leave it. <laughs> indeed, indeed, but we interrupt your Christmas gambles, and if the man is gone, we must go too. Uh, good night, my little Mariah. I say, Mariah, you ought not to speak to people like that. I'll speak to people as I like. But he was a curate. I bet he wasn't. What would a curate be doing spying in at the window? He wasn't spying in at the window. Well, he was trying to. I vote. We all go out and scrubble him. Oh, chuck it, Mariah. Now come on and play pirates. Where on earth is Kay? You go on home, Jim. I want to look in the shop windows. It won't take me long to walk back. Not if I take the shortcut by Monk's Beast. If you're sure, Master Kay. Yes, I am. They say that the ghosts and monks always gather here at Christmas. Ghosts and monks don't use electric torches. I'll move nearer to the ruin and see who's there. So, so Cold Orleans was among the bishop's choir, uh, and uh, we, we never noticed. Ha <laughs> ha, what? Yes, and you never noticed. Do you notice anything? I sometimes wonder. A clever dodge, though, what? Uh, to, to get in with the choir? No, don't it seem to you a clever dodge? I should have thought it an obvious dodge. Now he's got breath through our ring again. Just as we learn his disguise and where he is, you let him slip through your fingers with the box of delights on him. Oh, if only I'd been there, I'd have had him. 
You'd have thought him a cow singer just as we did. Would I? Would I, my gentle Joe, my far-seeing friend? But come now, the wolves are running. Find out where he's got to in Tutchester and get the box of him. Won't you come, Chief? We're willing hands, maybe, but where are we without your great brain? As our friend says, ha ha, what? <laughs> you might well ask where you be without me. Are you going to start to catch us? All right, with? Chief, we're going. I only ask. One of my spies is reporting to me here. See me at the Prince Rupert's arms. My thundering sky, are you ever going to shift? Little Abner Brown is in his little tantrums, ha ha, what? Yeah, you're right. He'll <laughs> tantrum you pretty soon. Yes, see, I, I told you, if you keep going, going oh, oh, what? he's going to get angry. And, and Abner Brown. I daren't move until he's gone. And if anybody comes, he's always found. Whatever it is, it's coming from under the ground. Is that you, rat? Oh, it's me. And what's the good of being me? Up in the attic and down in the cellar, all weathers, all hours. For you would sell your mother if you had one for what she'd fetch us all bones. <laughs> and what do I get by it? A bacon fat, you might say. Or the green of that cheese the dog won't eat. But I don't, my Christian friends. I get rheumatics. That and the dog sick at me. That's what. As a matter of fact, I've got some green looking cheese for you here. Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't give me this if you could sell it. You're right, I wouldn't. I understand you, Abner, and you understand me. That man, Joe, you better look out for, Abner. He's putting in for chief. Likewise, the aha what man. What do you mean? That's what. Uh, that's what. Yes, well, never that. What's your report? Him, what you what of the Punch and Judy Cove is a getting rid of his dog this evening. Oh, that's nothing. You've scared him, Abner, and I beheld their scare. Oh, this is news at last. What did you see? The drop of dew, upper room. There's passages pretty near all London and round this city to them who knows them. I've gone a dark stravage into pretty near every one, first and last. They had a meeting. She with the bright eyes, and he who you what of? He'll be trying to escape your ring of magic at dawn tomorrow by Arthur's camp across Butler's Down. Will he have the box of delights on him? Ah, oh, that's what. Well, will he? You only says to me, find out, you says, what they decide. There I've been, in them dark dwellings in danger of dog, and found out what they decided. Now, you says, will he have the box with him? You didn't tell me about that. But you did well, my brother. Brave rat. You did superbly. That's what. You said I was to have a bacon rind over and above the cheese. So you shall have my brave rat. I'll bring you one tomorrow. Oh, it's the bacon rind. Puts the plump on a man. Bacon rind tomorrow. That and marrow bone the day after proper makes your fur shine, it does. Is there any little dark job you want done then, Master Abner? Shall I go now? I want you to report at eleven o'clock tomorrow at the Prince Rupert's Arms, in case there should be anything. Will I have the bacon rind then? Yes. That K. Arker, what you what of? If you was to saw his head off, you'd do a good deed. I've heard in my stravages. He's to have a dog give him a Christmas, that's what. The boy won't bite you. Oh, I hate him. Of course he's going to have a dog give him. And now nights are cold and on the wold, the wintry winds do whistle. I ride my grey on the highway. Putting in for captain, are they? We'll see. What did that fool of a rat mean? Cool is to get the box out of the ring by Arthur's camp at dawn tomorrow. Butler's down, eh? As nice a quiet place for a scrobbling as ever was made. I'll scrobble him, box and all. What a world to come home to. So this, 
Abner Brown and his gang, all dressed up as clergymen, are after some box that the Punch and Judy man has. I wonder what it can be. When Caroline Louisa comes back tomorrow, I'll tell her the whole story and ask her advice. And who, I wonder, is going to give me a dog for Christmas? I say, Peter, did you hear that? It was just like wolves howling. Wolves are extinct. Peter? Mm. I feel certain something very important is to be done at King Arthur's camp tonight. What on earth are you lighting a candle for? I'm going out there. Will you come along? Arthur's camp? It's miles away. Whatever are you going there for? I just feel that I'm wanted there. Wanted? You're talking in your sleep. What time is it? Nearly midnight. Well, who on earth would want you there at midnight? Do be sensible. You'll catch your death of cold. It's probably pouring snow still. It isn't. Look! It stopped snowing. It's freezing like bilio, and about a foot of snow to slodge through. Do blow the light out and let a chap get to sleep. I'll go alone. How long will it take me? That's the point, with the snow so deep. <laughs> A pony! <laughs> Mount and ride, Kay, for the wolves are running. Oh yes, I will. Fly, Master K, fly! We're flying! We're flying! Over the hills and into the past, K. Seeking's house isn't there. There are no buildings. Where have they gone? They are not yet built. This is King Arthur's time. You see, K, below you. King Arthur's camp. I can hear drums. The wolves are attacking. And now I must take you down to meet an old friend. <laughs> the wolves are running. And now, here they are. Farewell, Master Kay. Kay! Master Kay! Mr. Hawlings! Master Kay, you stay here, beside me. <laughs> now, we are protected, Master Kay. We are protected. Don't you bother about those things. You only see them because I'm here with my magic. But it's like old times for me, seeing this. Winter nights in King Arthur's camp when the wolves were after the stock. Many times you'd stand too like this, almost till daylight, facing the wolves. And then the thing to do is to follow them, Master Kay. And never to let up till you've caught them. <laughs> for they lose heart. <laughs> and they're not half what you'd think they'd be. <laughs> but I hoped that you would come because other wolves are running they're running after me and they're running me very close it's not me they want it's my box of delights that you caught sight of at the inn if I hand that to you Master King will you keep it for me so that they don't get it of course I'll keep anything for you that you want kept but if you're in danger go to the police They'll defend you. No, oh, the police don't heed the kind of wolf that's after me. This, Master K, is the little box, and there are three things I must tell you about it. You open it like this. If you push this to the right, you go small. If you press it to the left, you go swift. 
not had this long. It's Master Arnold's, not mine. And though I've sought for him and called him, I've not found nor been heard. He's gone a long way back, Master Arnold has. Further than King Arthur's camp. Further than many dare go. If I had time, I might best the wolves, but they run me close with this new magic which I can't guard myself against. Going swift and going small will save you. You'll find you're young, but they won't save me, Master Kay. Not anymore, for I'm old and only know the old magic. Now, will you keep this for me until I'm able to claim it? If ever I may be able, or until old Master Arnold comes. But, but above all things, keep it from coming to them. Will you do that? If I possibly can, I will, of course. But who is this Master Arnold? And how shall I know him? Oh, you'll know him if he comes. He'll come right out of the old time. Now, no, one other thing. If you and your friend Master Peter would come out this way, towards dawn, my butler's down, you may see what comes to me. But now, good fortune, Master Kay. And I hope that I'll be back for the box of delights before so very long. Put it in your inner pocket. Now I must go. Be on butler's down at dawn. Don't leave me. Never heed them. But Mr. Horning, sir. Yes, sit to the left and go swift, my boy. Yes. I say, Gay, what are you doing? Haven't you gone yet? What's the time? Quarter to one. <sighs> Oh. Oh. It's nearly dawn. Come on, Peter. Let's go out and explore. Explore what? Oh, don't come if you'd rather not. But I want to go to Butler's Down. It's fun seeing all the animals' tracks in the fresh snow. But to get out before it's light on the first day of the holidays, I think it's the purple pim. Oh, get up, Peter. We can forage in the larder, then have a real breakfast when we come in. All right, then. Uh, what's that you've got? Oh, a box. Just a box. Someone's been here for the night. See? Footprints. That's odd. They start suddenly. None to show where they came from. He must have come before the snow. Let's follow to see where they go. What a night to have been out in. to go towards the trees where that aeroplane just landed must be from the aerodrome at Ryder's Wood no sign of a dog with these prints should there be? hey look! where? get down! over there! it's the Punch and Judy man isn't it? why is he running? there are four men they're after him come on! Mr Hollings! we won't make it they've got him they're dragging him into the the aeroplane come on we must go to see what tracks they've left. I say, I'm glad I came out with you. I never thought I should see a gang scrub an old man and carry him off in an aeroplane. It's very lucky that we've got the snow. All the tracks will be as clear as print. Don't let's run and keep well to the side of the old man's tracks so as not to obscure them. And let's get it absolutely clear so that we can tell the police. Two men in white ran out, then two others, and there must have been another man in the aeroplane. Four who did the attack, Inspector, and the first one, who had a bag, was the tallest of the four, and they'd all got something over their faces. Ah, indeed. I dare say that was those young officers from the aerodrome having a bit of a frolic. Oh, it wasn't like a frolic, and they weren't in uniform, and it wasn't a government plane. Ah, well, now then, did this old man struggle at all, or cry out? He didn't have a chance to. It all happened in an instant. They ran out, scrabbled him up, Put him into the aeroplane, and away they went. Well, it sounds like the aerodrome to me. A Christmas gamble and a bit of what you call ragging. But all the same, I am obliged to you, young gentlemen. I'll keep my eyes and ears open for anything out Butler's downway, and I'll ask what aeroplanes were out that way this morning. Hmm. You were a matter of 200 yards of the scene of this fracas, Master Harker. 
And you say you didn't recognise any of the parties? Well, we both think, and are almost sure, that the man was the Punch and Judy man who was at Sea King's house last night. He was stopping yesterday at the drop of dew, and his name was Cole Hawley. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> yes? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Now, that, Master Harker, that's what we call in the law a coincidence. That was our officer at Tachester asking about your Punch and Judy man called Hawlings. The man is at Tachester now, and the police are asking, is he a fit kind of man to give a public performance at the Bishop's Palace this very night as ever is? And he's at Tachester now? Yes, at the police station, showing his licence. Now, is he, Master Harker, a kind of man to perform before the Bishop and other holy men? Oh, he's simply wonderful. <clears throat> right. Um... I have every reason to suppose, from information received, that the man is a good performer and can be trusted not to disappoint, nor yet to shock the company. Uh, by the way, is the man there? Yeah, oh. <clears throat> Just bring him the telephone. Hello, hello. Is that Mr. Hollins? There's a young gentleman would like to have a word with you. Here you are, Master Harker. Is, is that you, Mr. Hollings? I just wanted to ask how you are. If you're any the worse for the wolves or the aeroplane. No, none the worse. I thank you. All the better. You really are Mr. Hawlings, that found my ticket and was scrubbled into the aeroplane. Really, truly? And you, you're the young gentleman? Yes. Goodbye, my young master. Goodbye, Mr. Hawlings. Hmm. <clears throat> so that's that. That's how science helps the law. You thought your friend was scrubbled. Now, by science and the law, you hear from his own lips that all is well. I'm very glad that the man is safe. Please forgive us for taking up so much of your time. It's my duty as a public man to listen to all and sundry at all times. Sometimes the law has to shut its eyes. Sometimes there isn't enough for the law to go upon. But at all times, I say, let the law in, Master Harker. However dark the deed, we bloodhounds of the law will bring it into the limelight. <laughs> There's a thaw. We shan't get very far with this snowman. we better stop. He'll never look up to much. We'll give him a sort of a head. If you please, you're not to get wet through. Oh, Ellen, have you had any telephone message? No, the telephone isn't working. Miss Susan, you are naughty to go and get yourself wet through like this. And you, Miss Jemima. Miss Mariah, your things will be ruined. Jolly good job. No, Miss Mariah, it isn't a good job. And you know that it isn't. To be wet through in the cold is the way to take your death. And you, Master K, you are wet through too. Oh, come on, Peter. Let's get out of this. There's too much discipline here altogether. Yes, come on. Master K? <laughs> Master K! Over the fence! Where are they going? What shall we do now? Let's go to Bottlers Down. I can't help thinking we shall find out some more if we go out now. It's only a mile. Well, all right. You see, two men have been along since we were here, and they're not countrymen, for they weren't wearing nailed boots. One of them was smoking a cigarette. See, the ash. There's the cigarette butt. Egyptian. What on earth have they been doing here, sweeping the snow aside? I wonder why they've done that. Oh, these bird enthusiasts are always doing things like that, to let the birds get at the worms. That's a bright idea. Hey, look, there's two men over there. Keep undercover, Peter. They're your bird enthusiasts. The plot thickens. I see it all. They scrubbled that old man, thinking that he'd got something which they wanted. They released the old man when they found he hadn't got it. Now they think that he's dropped it in the snow, and they're looking for it. They won't find it in this slush, I'll bet. They look like curates to me. They're the two who were on the train with me yesterday, and I've a very shrewd suspicion that they picked my pockets. You'd think that curates' clothes are a disguise? Yes. Golly, well, let's watch. Look. They're getting into a car. A very shabby car for gangsters. I can't see them now. They're beyond the wood. Listen. Peter, I wonder if that motor car could turn into an aeroplane. That's not possible. What was it they were hoping to find, though? Oh, Mariah says these gangs are always trying to get each other's codes and passwords. Don't you think? That should see nobody gets in. Now, to look at the box. I press this to open. If I push it to the right, I can go small 
Whatever that may mean. If I push it to the left, I can go swift. I've tried that. I wonder what it's made of. It smells of spice. The wood the phoenix built its nest in. So, to find out what they're seeking, to open the box of delights. The box is all alive and it's full of summer. All the birds singing. There's a linnet, a bullfinch, a robin. That's a little wren. Where did I hear that noise before? It's the rider who directed me to the lower locks. Only he's wearing antlers. And... Master Kay? Who are you, sir? I am Herm the Hunter. Are you coming into my wild wood? Yes, if you please, sir. Then take my hand. Don't be afraid. Enter the Box of Delight. I know nothing of the wild wood. You will if you stay with me. Would you like to be a stag with me in the wild wood? If you please. Next to being a jockey, I've always wanted to be a stag. And you shall be. But how? How? Come, Kay. Let us go to the lake. It's lovely running through the wood to have hard feet and not get sharp bits of twigs into one's soles. you like to be a wild duck? Joy! Joy! There's the lake, blue as a piece of sky below, and the sky above brighter than I've ever seen it. Now for the plunge. How beautiful the water is. Would you like to be a fish, Kay? Next to being a jockey, a stag, and a wild duck, I've always longed to be a fish. Did you see the wolves in the wood? No. Well, they were there, that was why I moved. Did you see the hawks in the air? No. Well, they were there, and that was why I plunged. And do you see the pike in the weeds? No. He's there, look. Now we are stags, now we will become as we are. You see that great ruined oak tree, Kay? Yes, sir. It is so old that all within is hollow, so the great shell still puts forth leaves and twigs. Yes, sir. It is part of me, and I shall take my leave of you. Take care, Master Kay. Be at Prince Rupert's arms, 11 o'clock. Goodbye, sir. So this is what the old man treasures. This is his box of delights. This is what Abner Brown is after and why the wolves are running. I must do what I can. So, I have to be at the Rupert's Arms for eleven. Half an hour's time. But how? Rat said there were passages pretty near all under and round the city. Rat runs most likely. Let's see if he's right. The box. Press to the right and go small. If I can get behind the wainscot somehow... I know. There's a mouse hole under Peter's bed. Ellen won't even sweep there. Gosh, it's a huge world. Here it is. If I can, if I can just squeeze through. I say, I didn't know mice could roller skate. Hello, Master Kay. How do you know who I am? We mice miss nothing much from the wainscots. Excuse me. You must know these underground places better than anyone. Than most. 
Could I get to the Prince Rupert's arms underground? Why, yes, of course. I'll take you there if you wish. But it's a bit of what you might call a peradventure getting to the Rupert's arms. Ah. Oh, that's better. Parts of the way, there are some very terrible fellows that lie in wait. Who are they? Abner Brown, the chap who used to be a cellarman here. He went away on the Spanish main, and when he came home, he brought his pirate crew with him. The Wolves of the Gulf, they call themselves. That's who they are. And they're all here, drinking rum and plotting devilry. Oh, terrible things go on every night. When I put my finger to my lips, that'll mean we are at the danger point. Whereabouts is the danger point? In the old powdering cellar under William's Ventry. We shall have to go right past it. Lead on, Macduff. If the worst comes to the worst, take my hand, for I think we shall be able to diddle them. Come on, then. Those wolves of the gulf were up here last night. They said they were going to break into Sea Kings. And are they? I heard the whole plan. Well, we'll see about that. Oh, but Master Kay, Master Kay, don't tell them that I told you. Come now, and don't be such a funk. It's so hot. This is near the furnace of William's Ventry, and it's near here that they've got their quarters. I can smell tobacco. They're here, round this next corner. Shh, no talking. <laughs> Just listen to me. We fly a banner all of black with scarlet skull and boneses. With every merchant man we take, we send to Davy Jones's. Course chance, please! And every merchant man we take, we send to Davy Jones's. Quickly, while they sing, this way, I'm right behind you. Listen, beyond this wall, Abner's own chambers. So we're in the Rupert's arms? Yes. If you step up here... There is a place where you can look right into the room. See? Yes. Abner Brown. And his wife, Sylvia. That'll be Rat. Dead on time. Come in, Rat. Who have you got with you? I make so bold as to present my nephew, Master Abner. Make a reference to the gentleman. What is your nephew's name? Oh, he answers to any name. Alf or Bert or any name. He ain't earned a name better than one of those. Mm, well, now, what will you take to drink, Rat? Well, I do like the drop of rum. Not because I like it, it's poison. But without it, I can't stand the climate. A drop of rum for Rat, Sylvia, my punxer. Uh, yes, my dearest. Nothing up. Oh, happy days. <laughs> That's the stuff. Poison. I can feel it doing me good all the way down. <clears throat> now, Alf, stand there and tell the gentleman what you seen last night. Oh, no, Alf. Speak up, Alf. What does he say, Rot? He says, speaking in front of you and your good lady <laughs> makes it worse than being tried, Mr. Abner. Well, you speak for him, Rat. <laughs> Honoured company, my nephew, Alf, what's here, went faithful to orders to the drop of you at the hour of a quarter to five yesterday. He was... No, I know all about this. You told me this last night. The agreed coal haulings would get away at dawn by Butler's Down. Yeah. Well, we waited for him at dawn at Butler's Down and got him. <laughs> but he did not have the box on him. Now, tell me, Alf, huh? when these three broke up at the drop of dew, was the box still in C.H.'s possession? Oh, well, uh, in his pocket. Ah, it was in his pocket. Uh, that's where he put it. He didn't slip it to either of the others. No. They said you keep it. And you followed this C.H. all the way to Seeking's house, never letting him out of your sight? Never once he let him out of his... never once for himself. Uh, uh, kept him in my sight. In spite of the dog? Yes, sir. Could you see if he hid the box on his way? He had it in his pocket. He kept tapping his pocket. Tappity, tappity. To make sure it was there. 
or the way he tapped his pocket. And you're sure that on the way to Seekings, tappity tappity, he met nobody to whom he could have given the box? Oh, I'll take my oath on Hamlet he didn't. Not a soul did we pass. It being all snow, such as I never. <laughs> what do you keep nudging me for, Uncle? <laughs> tell the gent what I told you to tell him. <laughs> there was another thing, if you please, gent, that my nephew had to tell you. And what thing? What is it? It was about that K. Arker, Master Abner. What about him? Well, you the see... The you speak for himself. What have you got to say about this K. Harker? Well, uh, nothing much, sir. Except that he ought to have his head sewed off. What for? Because he's going to have a dog give him for Christmas. You infernal young lout. What do you mean, rat, by bringing your nephew here to repeat your folly to me? Well, um, she said... Get out, the two of you. Get back to your sewer and have a bath. Oh, I have a guest long. with you. <laughs> Infernal fools. Well, now the question resolves itself into this. What did that man do with the box when those fellows let him get past them at Seeking's house? I felt too late that we ought to have been there and not trusted it to those people. Of all the blithering fools that I've ever had to deal with, Joe and Charles are the most blithering. He got away right under our noses. If Cole hid the box, he must have hidden it somewhere in Seeking's. Mm, he may not have hidden it. He may have... Handed it to somebody. Those Jones children, this boy, Kay Harker. I think, my ideal, mm -hmm. that he would not have trusted a treasure so great to any child whom he had not seen before that afternoon. Well, then, there remains the guardian, this Caroline Louisa. Ah! Cole would certainly have regarded her as a woman to be trusted. He must have been close to her in the hall. Mm. He could have handed it to her and whispered to her to keep it for him. Your imagination is quite Shakespearean. Therefore, we shall have to take steps about Madame Caroline Louisa. May a weak woman make a suggestion, my star-like Abner? Is it not more likely that he handed it to the bishop or one of the churchmen? It is only too likely, my empress. He would have handed it, probably to the bishop, who would have put the box in the cathedral treasure vaults. That's where the box is now, to bend upon it. My dear, I think you look a little too much on the gloomy side of things. I think it very likely, my dear, that the bishop would have put the box into a drawer in his dressing table among his collars and handkerchiefs and thought no more about it. I wish I could think it, my priceless pearl, my blue and my yellow sapphire, if I may call you so. Oh, yes, do. Cole gave it to someone, that's sure. And our scrobbling routine will soon find out who. <laughs> and now to other things. Look here, Sylvia. I'm tempted to get rid of Charles and his infernal ha uh, ha what? Oh, no, my emerald. He is one of our most precious workers. Get rid of Charles? Never. Whatever for? He let Cole go right past him with the goods on him, with his dog Toby at his side, and the Punch and Judy show on his shoulder. Could a prize imbecile have been blinder or sillier? I ask you. My topaz and diamond, you are unjust to our Charles. Can you not see that he is our only buffer against the stupidity of Joe? But enough, my idol. You do see. I see you see. Now, as to this child, Mariah Jones, whose ways you like, I admit, she sounds promising. Remember that Cole may have given the box to her. I remember that, but even so, that would be a point in her favour. I think you'll agree that she would be an acquisition. She must be here with Charles by now. Uh, shall I ring for her to be brought in? Do, my own Abbey. Through here? <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, Miss Mariah, good morning. Morning. It was most kind of you to come over in answer to our message. I heard that you were staying at Seekings and are very much interested in stained glass. 
We were making up a little party to go over to St. Griswold's this morning, lunching there and looking at the glass, and being back at Steaking's before tea. Uh, would you care to come along? Oh, by the way, you haven't been introduced. This is my wife, Mrs. Brown. How do you do? It's rather mouldy lot of glass, isn't it, at St. Griswold's? Mm. In the main church, yes. Um, nothing a day earlier than 15th century, but... In the Lady Chapel, oh, there is some of the best that was ever done. Ha <laughs> ha, what? It's a pretty mouldy thing, English glass, if you ask me. Uh, well, I think you will find this isn't English glass. <laughs> so, my dear, before we start, would you like to run back to Seekings and get some thick wraps? No, I'll come as I am, thanks. Hmm. Well, would you like to leave word that you will be out until tea time? Oh, no, thanks. They know that I can look after myself. I've been expelled from three schools. Yes, well, um, I count it a great honour to entertain so distinguished an ornament of her sex. Then uh, we will start, shall we? We will have a look at the glass in the morning light. We will get to the Bear's Paw at Touchester for lunch, uh, the place still famous for duck patty. <laughs> then we will glance at the western window while it has the light behind it and bring you safely back to Seeking's in good time for tea. <laughs> After you, my dear. Yes, sir. Don't go with them, Mariah. They're the gang. Mariah! They can't hear you, Master K. To them you are as the buzzing of a fly. Back now. Back to Seeking's Mouse as fast as you can. Oh, all right. <gasps> Wait! Oh, no! Give me your hand, Mouse. Press the button for Swift. Ready, Mouse? Yes. <gasps> Just a minute. I'll open the door. No? What do you want Jemima for? Well, I was out in the street buying Christmas presents when Mariah came out of the Rupert Sums and got into a car with some total strangers. What sort of a car was it? A big, rather old, dark car. Master K! She said something about stained glass windows. Oh, Master K, there you are. I didn't hear you come in. There has been a message from Caroline Louisa. She says she'll be here tonight by the 8-7, but you'll be at the Punch and Judy. Oh, that is good news. Is her brother better, then? Well, it seems so, Master K. Splendid. Oh, and Ellen, um, we'll have the car with us, so will you ring for a taxi to meet her? Yes, Master K. I'm just going out for a while. Where to? Peter says we have to leave for the Bishop's party in half an hour. The Rupert's Arms. If I'm not back before then, tell Jim not to wait. I'll join you all there. Yes? Oh, hello, Master K. Excuse me, Mrs. Calamine, but a guest of mine was here this morning visiting two clergymen. Could you possibly tell me who they were? Clergymen? Oh, that was the Reverend Dr. Buddledale with his wife and chaplain and private secretaries. He's the head of the Missionary and Theological Training College in the Chester Hills. I thought he was named Mr. Brown. Mr. Abner Brown. Oh, no, Master K. He's well known and a very holy man. And his lady, Mrs. Bottledale, but... But, oh, she does wear lovely jewels. Thank you, Reverend Bottledale. That was quite the most scrumptious duck pate I've ever tasted. I'm very partial to duck pate. Ah, here's your taxi especially ordered by my dear Sylvia. Taxi for Miss Mariah Jones. Ha <laughs> what? Thank you, it's so beastly wet. Goodbye, Miss Mariah. Just take me to the market square, please. I can get a bus from there. Shouldn't you have turned left? The road's up, miss. <laughs> Got to go this way. What? But what's happening? The window. Let me out. Slow down. We're turning into an aeroplane. Oh, tight, miss. An aeroplane. <laughs> Ah, 
Have no fears, Master Harker. The Reverend Dr. Bottledale is a pillar of the church and respectability. Now, depend upon it, Master Harker, you've come home, if I may say so, a little faint from the strain of learning. Your nerves want food. <laughs> what you need is a good hot posset. Your young friend is in good hands, believe me. <sighs> Wait a moment. Wasn't you to be tonight at the Punch and Judy show at Catchester Palace? Yes. And wasn't Miss Mariah to be there? Yes. Well, then she's a young lady who knows what's what. She'll have stopped in Tatchester, depend upon it, had tea, and gone on direct to the Bishop's Palace. You'll find her there, mark my words. I hadn't thought of that. Ah, <laughs> we in the law, Master Harker, we've got a maxim. It's the easy explanation that never occurs. You think all battle, murder, and sudden death. And all the time, it's only a tire getting a puncture, or something equally simple. Don't you worry. Just get you off to Tatchester and the Bishop's party. You'll be late as it is. If you please, Your Grace, mm -hmm. do you think I might say goodbye to the Punch and Judy man? Oh, I'm afraid he's gone. Oh, no. Somebody in an old car came for him as soon as his performance was over. Do you know where he went? Uh, as I seem to know. I, I really can't recollect. He did say, but I, I forgot. I shall think of it when I go to bed tonight. It's somewhere not very far from here. But it, it was Cole Hallings, wasn't it? The old man who was at Seekings last night. Yes, yes, it was Cole Hallings. Oh, I'm really sorry I missed him, you see. Really sorry. <laughs> well, never mind, Master Kay. You haven't missed the party. We're about to light the tree and give out the presents. Hey, has your friend Mariah arrived yet? We've looked everywhere, haven't we, Peter? She isn't here. Mm. What should we do? I've telephoned Ellen, and she's not turned up at Seekings either. We'd better go back. Excuse me, Your Grace. If I may intrude for a moment. What is it, Rogers? Well, I'm sorry to tell Your Grace, but during the performance, the burglars have been in every room of the palace. What? They've turned the place just topsy turvy, Your Grace. Oh, good heavens. Well, come on, we must telephone the police immediately. They got every single thing that there was worth taking. How do you know? Rogers, the butler, told me. The palace is full of guests. They all bought their family jewels, and now they're gone. A cool 40,000 wouldn't pay the insurance, he said. Well, I do hope, I really do hope, that Mariah hasn't had a hand in it. You know her and gangs. It would be just like her to do a thing like that. So what's all this about burglars, eh? I hope they didn't frighten you. No. But, Ellen, has Miss Mariah turned up? Not yet, Master Kay. Whoever thought of a bishop being burgled? And is my guardian back? No, Master Kay. But her brother's rung up. The weather was so bad that the train didn't start. So she's had to stay on. But she sends her love and tells you not to worry, and she hopes you're having a good holiday. The simple explanation is always the last one thought of. That's very true. Ellen, can you make possets? <laughs> yes, Master Kay, of course I can. Well, I wish you'd make me a big one, because I'm feeling very miserable. Miss Mariah Jones, please forgive any inconvenience we may have caused you in bringing you here, and above all, don't be afraid. I'm not used to being afraid. We only brought you here because we hope that you may be interested. We're rather in need of a dashing young associate at the moment, and we're wondering whether we might persuade you to become that. Why do you want me? Well, you are young and full of dash. And what is the work? Ah, we shall discuss that if you express a willingness to become one of us. If your job were honest, you'd say what it is. It can't be nice, or it wouldn't have you in it. If children are pert here, we make them into dog biscuit. Many a good watchdog is barking now on insolent little chits like you. If ladies have heard to me, I make them into cat's meat. Many a good caterwaul have I fed on meat like you, cold. <laughs> ladies, ladies, ladies. The first word in business of any kind is unity. Now do let us have unity. Without that, we can never get anywhere. Now, Miss Jones, if we cannot have unity from you, let us have some information. When Mr. Cole Hawlings gave his performance of Punch and Judy at Seekings, did he hand you a small black box? No, he didn't. Did he leave it with one of the others of your party there? Or hide it in Seekings' house? How on earth do I know? That's the point. 
do you know? Well, I don't know. You need not look at your watch. You will have lots and lots of time. If I were you, my topaz, I would put this young person into the scrounger. Do you know what a scrounger is, my dear? Yes. I don't think you do. It's a place that we put people into. It has a thing in it that goes round and round and round, which is the scrounger. And then presently, of course, the thing scrounged becomes dog biscuit. <laughs> Lights out, my emerald. Leave her in darkness. Oh, yes. <laughs> Put the lights out. It's all about the burglary in the paper this morning. They say that dramatic developments may be expected shortly. That's what they always say. Well, yes, but where's Mariah? She always falls on her feet. Don't you worry about Mariah. If she's not back by 4.30, I'm going to the police. They'll only tell you to take another posset. You're just grumpy. Worry when there's no need. So what are we doing today? I know what we'll do. The snows are melting, the floods are out, the weather's splendid. Let's go for a mudlark. What's a mudlark? We'll launch the ship I got from the bishop's Christmas tree and christen it properly. What do you say, Kay? Pretend that it's a real ship. Yes. And we'll take sandwiches and cakes. And we won't come back till tea time. Well, yes, all right. But I'll just get something from my room. You better have some anchors. All ships have anchors. Otherwise they wouldn't be able to stop. You've got to be jolly careful with anchors on ships so little as these, though. Kay's right. Sometimes they'll pull the ships right underneath the water. I say, look, there's an aeroplane. It's going to land. It's coming down by the copse there. I'll bet it's after us. What? Bring the ship into the bank. There are four men getting out. They've got pistols and ropes. I think it would be wise to get out of the way. But it's all Tommy Rot. Who'd be coming after us with pistols and ropes? There are probably mole catchers coming to set traps. When did you ever hear of mole catchers coming in aeroplanes with pistols? They're the men who kidnapped the Punch and Judy man. I'm sure they're after us. Then what can we do? Well, you remember the Punch and Judy man? Carl Hallings? Yes. I've got here a magic box of his. His box of delights, he called it. If we all hold hands while I touch a button on it, we shall all shrink into tiny little creatures. And then we can get on board Peter's ship and go down the stream to escape them. Yes, but... There's no time to waste. I promised I'd help him. And if we're to help him, we must save ourselves. Hold hands. Believe me. Trust me. Believe in his magic. You've seen it. Hold hands. You must believe in the old magic. Peter? Yes, Kay. Now... I must press the button to the right. All hands on board! Weigh anchor! All very well, as long as we keep in midstream, Kay. But in a flood like this, if we jam against some wreckage or fallen tree, we should be sucked right under. Trust me! <laughs> oh, what the heck? We're far enough away. We'd better go into land now, OK? Over there, by the elm tree. Watch out ahead! I don't know whether we'll make it. Wrap it the head, Peter. Look! Peter! Peter! Hold fast! All hands, hold fast! Peter! Hey! Peter? Yes? Susan? Fine. Jemima? We're all right, Kay. We're saved. Peter, head for the bank. And now I vote we eat and decide what we do next. Shh! Wait! Well, they seem to have got away from us. Ha <laughs> ha, what? Abner won't be too pleased when he hears the results of today. I told you! One of us should have stayed up in the aeroplane to observe. Oh, you told us a lot, didn't you? Ow. Come along. We'd better hurry. Hold hands. Swift to the left.
Twiddles. What are you doing outside? Good heavens, look! What is it? The front door's wide open. And the window to the library's broken. The inspector's car's there. Kay, we've been burgled. We were called away, Master Kay, to look to my mother, who they said was very ill. But when we reached her, we found her never better. Oh, they must have broken in while we were away. Do look what they've done. It's all right, Master Kay. They don't seem to have taken much. Oh, yes, but... Oh, Master Kay, whatever shall we do? Whatever will your guardian think? Oh, who could have done such a thing? Smart London men, we said, and that's who did it. Old hands. They've all worn gloves. We may be able to trace where the telephone message came from, but it's none too rosy. Hmm, there's a strong smell of plug tobacco in the air. Does anyone that's seeking smoke, Miss Ellen? Oh, I know, Inspector. And Mariah still hasn't come back. Ah, it reminds me. I've got a message for you about that. Um, your young friend, Miss Jones, was at St Griswold's looking at the glass with some clerical gentleman and Father Boddledale. Then they had lunch at the Bear's Paw. And after that, Father Boddledale says he and his young men said goodbye and came away. What happened to her since? Oh, we don't know yet. But you leave the matter in the hands of the law, Master Kay. The law is said sometimes to be slow, but it never sleeps. While you are snug in your bed, Master Kay, the law is up and about, taking thought for you. And your Miss Mariah won't be long missing. You take my word for it. Well, I'm blessed. We are having a holiday. I wonder what it is the gang are after. I hope they won't kidnap any more of us. Do you think they scribbled Mariah? It's not that box, is it, Kay? The magic box that the Punch and Judy man gave you? It's not, though, is it? It's not that that they're after. I'm going to sleep now. Is it, though? Night, Peter. squad in the finest cohort in the star wing of the crack legion of the whole imperial roman army search it will you will you'll not find anything anywhere to touch or come near the blue and white stripers of the tachester tops i suppose not and are you going to camp at duke's heath oh, no no uh, we're the wolf guard passing that way with the males we go on to the frontier are the wolves very bad so so it's best to keep your eyes skinned duke's moor is none too good a place there are some of the old lot there who used to hold Chester Hills. There's a Roman camp at Chester Hills. There had need to be. Well, you have a fighting there, please. Uh, you call it so. A bad place and bad people. Men disappeared and were never seen again. But well, you see, it's a limestone country, all honeycombed with caves, and these wolves, as we called them, were all underground, keeping our men prisoners. It cost us many deaths to get them out of there. You mean men wolves? They're none too good, the wolves. Now, if you stay here, your friend will be with you soon. And we'll go on. What friend? The friend you're meeting. But now don't you sleep, Master Kay. Do not sleep. It's cold. So cold. And I'm tired. So tired. Mustn't sleep. Mustn't sleep. Master Kay, they are here. 
Ah, look, we will go inside that oak tree. Ah, there's the oak. Listen to me, Master Kay. They have taken Cole, they have taken Mariah, they have taken Caroline Louisa, and they will take others. But don't lose courage, Kay, even if the wolves are running. You will beat the wolves, won't you, Kay? Yes, I will. You have the box of delights? Yes. Then press swift to the left and home. In part one of The Box of Delights by John Macefield, dramatized by John Peacock, with music by Neil Brand, Donald Sindon played Abner Brown, Lionel Jeffries, Cole Hawlings, and Celia Imry, Sylvia Daisy Panzer. Kay Harker was played by Alistair Souk, Peter by Benjamin Guy, Mariah by Kimberly Staines, Jemima by Alyssa Mason, and Susan by Holly Vogt. David Collins was the Bishop of Tachester, Gavin Muir, Herne the Hunter, Chris Emmett, Mouse, Geoffrey Matthews, the Police Inspector, Jane Whittenshaw, Caroline Louisa, Sandra James Young, Ellen, and Jill Graham, the Lady of the Oak Tree. David March was Rat, David Holt, Charles and Barney Dog, Simon Treves, Joe, Richard Tate, Rum Chops, and Paul Jenkins, Alf. Jonathan Keeble was the Roman Captain, John Hartley, the landlord of the Drop of Dew and the Tiny Drum Major, Zulema Dean, Mrs. Calamine, and John Stiles, Mr. Punch. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The director was David Blount. It's cold, so cold, and I'm tired. So tired. Mustn't sleep. Mustn't sleep. Kay! 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 Caroline Louisa, where are you? Here. I'm shut up in the darkness. Kay! Underground, Kay! Help me! Stay here, the wolves are running. They have grown powerful. Come with me, they are on us, Master K, they are here. Hey, look, we will go inside that oak tree. Hi, oh, Mr. Oak. Listen to me, Master K. They have taken Cole, they have taken Mariah, they have taken Caroline Louisa, and they will take others. Lose courage, Kay, even if the wolves are running. You will beat the wolves, won't you, Kay? Yes, I will. You have the box of delights? Yes. Then press swift to the left and home. The Box of Delights by John Macefield Dramatized in two parts by John Peacock With music by Neil Brand Part 2, Under the Chester Hills. Dawn's coming up. 
I will find you, Mariah and Caroline Louisa, wherever you are. I wonder what time it is. I've been here hours. It's probably daylight by now. I can't see a thing down here. Somebody coming. What I need now is a pistol. Dungeon lights! It's so bright! I can't, I can't see! Get her! No! Get me! Get off me! There's some you need to kick. Oh, you need to try to bite. <laughs> and you can't scratch now they've got your arms. So, where is the box of delights? I've told you I don't know what it is or where it is. And even if I did know, it would take more than a herd of wild horses to drag it out of me. Search her, my topaz. And when you've done with her... I may put her through the scrounger. You will give her to number seven, hmm. who will carry out my orders. The snowman's gone. The rain's washed him away. Oh, Master Kay. And all that's left is this carroting nose. Ellen, I'm sorry, Master Kay. Some more terrible news. The Bishop of Tachester's disappeared. What? And the Dean. The paper's full of it. Let me see. Read it out. Right on the front page. Startling disappearance of the Bishop of Tachester. Considerable alarm was caused in ecclesiastical circles. The reverend gentleman went out of the palace last night for a brisk walk before going to bed, according to his custom, and he hasn't come back. What's happened? It's terrible, Peter. You look pretty gloomy. We're all pretty gloomy. The bishop's been scrubbled. What? Last night. And there's still no message from Caroline Louisa, nor a single sign of Mariah. Thought, would know when a person is telling the truth and when a person isn't. See to her. Already, Joe. <laughs> what? <laughs> Start the engine. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> Where I tell you, Abner's orders. We're moving. Oh no, oh, oh we're, we're taking off. <laughs> now my ears are popping. They're probably going to drop me from a great height into the ocean. And I'll never see Peter or Jemima or Susan again. <laughs> So they didn't drop you into the ocean? No, they landed and bundled me out in the Condicote churchyard. But what happened to you in the first place? I was scrubbled, just like a greenhorn. You aren't usually the one to get scrubbled. Who scrubbled you? Tell us the whole story. I'm not going to tell any story at this moment. What I want, Ellen, is underdone chops and plenty of them. I'll get them right away, Miss Mariah. I'm going to build up my nervous system before anything else. Oh, it is good to see you. And then I'll tell you everything. What are you doing, Kay? Getting dressed. What time is it? Seven o'clock. Seven? Oh, you are the purple pim. Listen, the gang that scrubbled Mariah and the bishop, I'm sure there's something to do with the missionary college. Out at Chester Hills? I know it sounds absurd, but I'm sure of it. Peter, w would you come with me to see what kind of place it is? Well, I don't mind, but... <laughs> Can't we wait until after breakfast? I was thinking we might go before. Breakfast won't be till nine, and Mariah won't be up for hours. How on earth could we go all that way and be back before nine? You'll see. But... Come on! Like when we went boating, with that magic box? Just hurry up and get dressed. Give me your arm, Peter. to the left and go swift. Now this is Chester Hills. Look, there's the college, through that gate. It looks all right. 
This is once a Roman camp. Jolly good chaps, the Romans. That's flying low. Must be from the airfield. It looks like the aeroplane that we saw on Butler's down. It's coming down to land. It's going to hit the college building. Gosh. What's happened? Where's it gone? I don't know. The engine cut out and it simply descended into the building. Whoever would have thought that an aeroplane could do that? It's probably the very thing that scrobbled Mariah. Part of what the Punch and Judy man called the new magic. Come on, let's get into the grounds. The gate's padlocked. What are we going to do now? Come on, let's climb over. We better not talk much and we must make as little noise as possible. <sighs> Hey, Kay. I wish you wouldn't hurry on like this. You ought to go cautiously. It's absolutely safe. If we keep some undergrowth between us and the lake, they won't see us from the house. So, you'll get them all in the soup. Ha <laughs> ha, what? Shh! Lie low, Peter. There's somebody coming. As to that matter, sir, uh, that's a question that must wait till we've had our bathe and eaten our breakfast. It's Abner Brown and the ha ha what man. It will be mighty cold. One plunge and then out will be enough for me. It will be exhilarating. Yes. Ready, what? One, two, three. Whoa! It's like iced water, what? Enough for honor. My, my blood will never run warm again. Let's get back, 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 back to the house. That must be the call to breakfast. Look. And that must be the gang. Well, some of them go to the main hall. I dare say Mr. Hawlings and the bishop, and maybe even Caroline Louisa, are shot up in dungeons only a few yards from here. Well, I'm not so sure, Kay. That sounds like a missionary college. Yes, but what would Abner Brown be doing here? And what would they need with an aeroplane like that if they're only missionaries? Anyway, now we're here, we must look around. I'm going down to the house. Are you coming? No. I don't think I will, thanks. I'll go and look at the boathouse. Well, do be careful. That tower clock's just struck half past eight. When it strikes nine, meet me at the main gate. Right. When the clock strikes nine... Where's the box? I'll press tiny and swift to the chief room in this place. If you were the only girl in the world, and I was the only boy... Here's Abner, and he wouldn't sing unless you were up to something pretty bad. I'll hide in this bookcase. We would go on loving in the same old way. And top in the garden... Did you please ring, oh father? Uh, yes, twenty, I did ring. What news? Give me my messages. I would say such wonderful things to you. And send seven here, would you please? Yes, father. Oh, so the police have a clue, have they? Clever chaps, the police. Clever fellows. Ah, a Lady Kingsbridge. She offers seven thousand for the sapphires. <laughs> ah, no, madam. This is not a bargain sale. Eighty-five thousand is our price. Ram, ram, tiddly, ram. Who'll have a drink with me? You want me, chief? You might close the door, perhaps. Gently. You sent for me, chief. Yes, Joe. I hear you've permitted yourself some criticisms of my orders about these clergymen. Odd how the news gets about here, isn't it? You're right. Ah, so you have been criticising my orders. Why? Well, if I knew why the orders was given, I might see sense in them. But to kidnap a lot of clergymen who can't afford any ransom worth your while seems to me a lot of foolishness. You've roused the press, you've roused the yard, and you've roused the nation. Here's the morning papers. All to get a box, you say, that belongs to the Punch and Judy man? Correct. Uh, that was in the possession of the Punch and Judy man would be better, perhaps. Well, then, that's why we criticise. 
You know that Cole Hawley's had the box when he went to see his house. You know that he hadn't got it next morning. Why don't you make him tell you where he put it? Joe, can I trust you with a secret? Why, Chief, you know you can trust me with anything. Except perhaps a cold drink on a hot summer's day. <laughs> As a general rule, if a man can't keep a secret, he needn't expect anybody else to keep it for him. Still, in this case, I'll make an exception. I will tell you why even I dare not threaten or hurt coal haulings. Did you ever hear of Raymond Lully? You, you mean the chap who did the box trick at the Colosseum? No, Joe, not the Colosseum, man. The man I mean was a philosopher of the Middle Ages. They show his tomb at Palmer. Remember the name, for I shall allude to it later. Right, I can remember. Did you ever hear of Arnold of Toddy? No, no, I can't say I ever well, did. Well, he too was a philosopher of the Middle Ages. He and Lully were rivals. Lully was all for finding an elixir of life that would make him last through the future. Whereas Arnold was always trying to find some power of entering the past. Golly, they were a couple of queer cough drops, if you ask me. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Arnold of Toddy, by some extraordinary magic power, created a box by means of which he could enter the past at will. In fact, he did the box trick like that chap at the Coliseum. <laughs> Arnold used the box to enter the past, but became lost there, and is wandering in the past forever. However, Joe, when he went on his journey, he left the box behind. Dante had it. Two of the great painters of Italy had it. And I have reason to believe that Shakespeare had it, and that he gave it to a lady, one of the Stibberers of Tachester, who was afraid to use it and who buried the box in the castle vaults. This woman, Aurelia Stibera, when she was old, repented of her folly. She wrote down the bearings of the hiding place. The actual bearings were in cipher, but above the cipher she wrote some verses a in rum English. Rum tum rum, yeah. we'll have a drink with In me. English, oh. which suggested that the cipher was worth deciphering. But perhaps, my dear Joe, I worry you with this. I should be desolated to inflict boredom on an old friend. Uh, go ahead. Now we've begun, I may as well know it all. Mm. While I was staying with the bishop at the time of the last missionary conference, I came upon the verses and deciphered the message. Can you imagine my excitement at finding that the amazing treasure of one of the most amazing men of all time was buried in the earth less than twenty miles from here? A thing that Shakespeare and Dante and the great painters had used, that I only had to dig it up and have it for my own. So then I suppose you got busy? Busy? You little know, Joe, what I went through. I learned what the cipher contained at two in the morning. Before three, I was on the site of Stibera Castle. Pitch dark night, gale blowing, rain coming down in torrents, the ivy blowing loose from the walls, bits of bough flying everywhere. I was wet through, was cold to the marrow. I didn't mind wet, I didn't mind cold. And there... By the first rays of light, I saw that I was too late. Someone had read the cipher a little before me. I had been beaten, as you would put it in your poetical way, at the post by a short head. He had got the things at sunset on the night before. And who was it? The only man who had been near the ruins was a little old man who played a punch and judy show. Oh, Cole Hawlings! As he calls himself now. Well, you've got Cole Hawlings all right. You've no cause to complain. I suppose it wasn't hard to run him down, an old man with a punch and judy show. I have other ways of finding things out. But of course, you don't believe in magic, do you, dear? Uh, no, no, but, well, sometimes, Chief... Sometimes you talk in a way that makes me think you've got, well, 
bats in your belfry. <laughs> bats in the belfry is magic, Joe. And magic is how I found out that Cole Hawlings is Raymond Lully. But, but you said Raymond Lully was dead, Chief. I said they show his tomb in Parma. Raymond Lully drank the elixir of life, and here he is now, still living, centuries later, as Cole Hawlings. Chief, if you don't mind, I'll sit down. Some of what you've told me is a bit of a knockout. Well, that's that, then. That is that. About his clergyman, what we still don't see is... Why you keep scrobbling the clergyman? Is it your game to stop that special Christmas service? I'll stop that service if they don't deliver the box or tell me where it is. Chief, Chief, I don't like what you're doing. What? Of course, I've got no hint to let. Don't go by what I say. I congratulate you on your knowledge of yourself. You're not employed for your intellect, but for your nerve. Abner! Are you losing your nerve, Joe? No. Good. Abner, my dear, you've talked and talked. Do come to breakfast before it's all cold. Uh, certainly, my panzer. We've said all that we have to say. Oh, we have, have we? Come along, my emerald. Coming, my pearl, to breakfast, Joe. Yeah, right. I must get back to meet Peter. Well, Peter always was an ass. He never had much sense of time, and he'll always go wandering on and blundering into something. Help! Help me! Peter! The lake! Help someone! It is breaking! Cover it with this! Watch his Watch his legs! That's Peter! Scrubbled! They've got him in that boat! Oh, and there's nothing I can do to help him! Should I go to the village and rouse the police there? Oh, no! The policeman could well be one of the gang, and I should be arrested for trespassing. I'll get back home and speak to the inspector. Perhaps by that time there'll be a word from Caroline Louisa. What have they have got, Peter? He's not the only one they've got. There's a special edition of the paper. They've scrubbed the whole of the cathedral staff as well. No, they can't have. They have, Kay. Look here. Unparalleled atrocity. More horrors at Tachester. Have the Bolsheviks begun? A terrible plot is afoot. Reign of terror in Cathedral City. But just think of their bagging the cathedral staff at one swoop. They gave us a jolly nice party the other day. And what will they do for the Christmas services? I don't know, but as soon as I've had some breakfast, I'll go round to the police station and tell them about Peter. But you know, Master Kay, you ought not to have gone trespassing at Chester Hills. It's a dangerous place. They have a lot of mines they call dings. Hope your master Peter hasn't been and gone and fallen into one. Oh, he hasn't. Please, Inspector, if you'd only go to the barracks, call out the Touch of Blues and raid the college, you'd find the bishop and the rest of the clergy there. I'm sure you would. And Peter. Oh, you run on about the college, Master Kay. This is what in medical circles is spoken of as a obsession. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh uh, yes, Chief Constable. Well, why won't you believe me? Come along, will you? We need every man we can get. We're to give police protection to the clergy detail for duty in the cathedral. Oh, but it's Christmas Eve tomorrow. Now you run along, Master Kay. And bring a truncheon. You may well need it. In a few hours it'll be too late. Come along, Master Kay. Home. Perhaps if I look into the box, I may meet with Herne the Hunter again. And, oh... Uh, if I do, I'll ask about Arnold of Toddy, for he's the cause of all this trouble. It's his box of delights, and if he had it again, then perhaps all this hunting for it and scrobbling folk would stop. Hearn? Hearn the Hunter? Where are you, please? I need your help, sir. I know what you want, Kay. Thank you, sir. I knew you'd come. You want to know about Arnold of Toddy? He went back into the past and was caught in it somewhere. Lost, never able to get back. And the past, Kay, is a big book with many, many pages. 
And if you go looking for Arnold, who knows if you will ever find him. I have this box. Won't this box help me to find him? No, Arnold left that box behind him because he made another way of getting back, which he liked better. The box is good for Europe, but Arnold wanted the East. Could you take me to Arnold, please? No, we do not know where he is. Somewhere in the past, that is all we know. Well, what part of the past do you think he went back to? As to that, there's only one part that everybody goes to, and that's the Trojan War. Could I get down to the Trojan War to ask about him? You could. There are generally people there. One of them may have noticed Arnold or heard where he went. He didn't stay there, probably. People don't. And if he had stayed there, he wouldn't be lost, would he? <laughs> and we know that he is lost. How do you know? The word got about. How could I get to the Trojan War to ask? I could get you there, but you must leave the box behind you. And I strongly advise you to do no such thing. You may never get back. I expect I shall. I'm not so sure of it. Please. You're bent on going? Yes, sir. Well, in a way, it won't be you that goes. It'll only be a shadow of you. The rest will be asleep. The you that goes will cast no shadow. People won't like that, you'll find. I shan't mind. They may. And they're a pretty rough crowd in parts of the past. I'll chance it. It's a dangerous thing to get mixed up in the past, but if you must, you must. Lie down and sleep, okay? And I will send your shadow to Troy. Sleep, okay? Sleep. Sleep. This is really Troy. There are the walls, and that's the tower of the Skyian Gate. But, but I've come just too late. The war is over, and the city has been sacked. Sir, young sir with no shadow, hear me. Who are you? I was a priestess in the temple, among whose ruins you now find me. You are looking for Arnold of Toddy. He was here. But he's gone. Where did he go? He went with the wolves. The wolves? Has he gone long? A matter of 500 years ago. Go quickly to the harbor where fate will seek you out. But how will I find them? Go quickly before it is too late. Oh, now! Are you sick of the Mediterranean? But we are. I don't know very much about it. Well, you will if you stay here. We're looking for a crew. Come on, Paul. If I may, sir. No, she creaks, uh, just like old Bill after he was hanged in chains. Now, come on, up with you, young master. What's the ship called, sir? There's no name on her. Why? She was the Sea Wolf, but now she's to be renamed the Royal Fortune. Now, uh, our key to the captain. Feathers! I called you all together. Steward! A polar rum! Brothers, fill your panicans. We are going again on the grand account. Cast anchor! <laughs> see what this is. She's a merchant ship which has been captured by pirates. Sea wolves. What you doing there, boy? Skulking? Always skulking in the shadows. We've been watching you since we left Troy. Why are you a skulker? No reason. No reason, sir. Come into the sun. I'm very well suited here, if you please, sir. Do as I say. No one. I gotcha! Yeah. Here he is, boy! Help! Here's another of them! Help Hold me! Him. What is it there? There's another of them, please, Captain! I've been watching him since we left Troy! I'm sure he's got no shadow! Move him out into the sun! It's true. He's got no shadow. No more than the other one we had. Well, we'll soon settle that. One good whack of me cutlass, that'll let the shadow out that's tucked inside of it. Wait now. Once before we had one of this sort with no shadow, we found a way of dealing with him. We marooned him on the Tiburonis. And there are the Tiburonis, hoving under the horizon now. 
I say that we shall maroon this man there too. Yeah, yeah maroon, 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 maroon him. him. Yes. You'll right. stay there and live with the other fella till you get to Shadow's back. That's the place for them. The Tiberoni. Yeah. Yeah. That's a queer sort of name to give to a place, to be sure. What did they give it a name like that for? Well, the Tiberonis is its name, and the Tiberonis is its nature. It's the Spanish word for sharks. <laughs> ah! Those are the Tiburones, champing their teeth for you. <laughs> now each has got three rows of teeth. One to grip, one to tear, and the third to chunk up tiny. Beach the boat! <laughs> now, out you get your shadowless whelk. I do have a shadow, sir. At home. Hold your chops, Sculpin! If you look among the woods, you may find your brother. Now, back to the ship, me hearty. Perhaps I would have been wise not to come exploring into the past. So here I am, marooned. Like Paul Ben Gunn in Treasure Island. Unless I'm able to run down the goats, if there are any, I'm not likely to get much dinner. I'd better explore. Inhabited. Maybe there are cannibals here. Oh, I wish I knew what cooked men smelt like. Singing. I'll move close to see who it is. Unkend and calm. As far away as Trebby's on from Toddy Weir. Toddy Weir? It's Arnold! And was tomorrow, yesterday, or has it been and gone today? Will no one say? I wish someone would say. The fact of the matter is, they don't know. Oh, Italiano? No, English. Come then, sit, eat. Drink a toasted banana, a shell full of water. Eat, eat, for the young can enjoy what they eat. Thank you, sir. You excuse me, what year in Anno Domini is this? 1935. What you say? 1900? Yes, 1935. In the future or in the present? In the present. Oh, oh, what a thing is time. Tell me, please, sir, are you Mr. Arnold of Toddy? Yes, I was once, but that was when I belonged to the year of our Lord, which I went out of by my own act. I would have none of it. I went back into the past and should therefore have another name, such as... Alexander, tell me, in the time that you know, do they speak much of Alexander the Great? He's mentioned sometimes. Oh, oh, imagine it. Mentioned sometimes. Is not that typical of European things and people, rulers and ruled alike, childish? Trivial, wanting in will. Why did you go back into the past? Why? Because of the dullness of the time into which I was born. I made a way to get back into the past. A certain box. You may not credit it, but a man came all the way from Spain to offer me the elixir of life in exchange for it. He gave me a sip of the elixir, and I let him see my box. But, oh, I would not make the exchange. 
It was Raymond Lully who came to you from Spain with the elixir. Oh, I... I never paid much attention to the man's name. When I made my box, I wandered into the past of Europe. Oh, it was all so dull. Dreary kings, dreary murders, silly wars. So I got out of it as soon as I could. I abandoned that box and made a second which took me into the past of Asia. And then suddenly, in one of those cities in Asia Minor, I first saw Alexander. You never met Alexander? No, in indeed, I never did. Oh, you ought to set to work to make yourself a box like mine that would take you where you could meet him. I have your first box of delights at present, though it belongs really to Mr. Lully, who's keeping it for you. It is a trivial toy. I ought to have taken his elixir and drunk deep of it. Then I could have gone on and on with Alexander. Presently, young man, I shall perfect another box, much greater than any that I have yet made. With this third box, I will go after Alexander, where he rides on some planet, in some starry place in heaven. I will harness the comets for him, and we will come down, young man, and we will sweep away all these paltry kings and you English with tails. We haven't got tails. Kay, Kay. The fact is well known. Kay. Oh, he's as mad as a hatter. Kay, we're with you. Come, Kay, we can take you home. You must not be lost in the past this way. Can Arnold of Toddy come too? He's been most awfully kind to me. Yes. Let him come. Mount the dolphin and follow me. Stick on tight, okay? They're on mounts at first. I was tired. Why? What's happened? They tried to scrabble another clergyman. The Reverend Josiah Stalwart. What? Did did they get him? No. He hit two of the bandits over the head with the holly cudgel. He must have been a bit of a boy to take on two. Don't you think? Aren't you going to say something? What? Where's Arnold? Arnold? Who's Arnold? It's very odd. What? He's not there. Who are you looking for? They said he could come. What? So it's up to me now. Alone. Arnold won't help me. It's almost Christmas Eve. I'm, I must find out what Abner intends to do. Swift and small to Abner's room at Chester Hills. Who sent those two fools to tackle Josiah Stormont? I did. Didn't I give you strict orders that no scrubbling party was to consist of less than four, three to scrubble, and one to keep the car ready? Now, Chief, chuck it. We'll set that aside, if you don't mind. I've other things to say to you now. You say, Chief... I've been thinking of things, and 
I've made up my mind. Ah, what did you decide? Tomorrow's Christmas Day. So I hear. What about it? Christmas Day is rather a special day. We don't like keeping all those poor people just now. Little choir boys have been looking forward to hanging out their stockings. It's more than we can bear. Well? We want you to return all the captives tonight, buy hair, with a ten pound note apiece. Then the whole thing would pass off as a rag, and it would tell in our favour if we ever got caught. So, we don't like, and we want this, and we want that, and a made-up mind all piping hot with mutiny. Were you thinking of getting rid of little Abner, Joe, and then putting in for the command yourself? I was thinking nothing of the sort, Chief. But you're making a mistake, and so we warn you. Warn me? That's a mistake, Joe. Forewarned is forearmed. I thank you. And now we'll go down to see the captives. Uh, there was another thing we've got to speak about. Got to speak about? Then speak it. Proceed. I've been telling them about your magic and that. What we don't see is why you don't use magic to find this box that you set such store by. You're a cricketer, aren't you, Joe? A fast bowler with a terrifying inswerve. Oh, oh, I suppose I can plug him in a bit. And sometimes, I suppose, even you come up against a bat who hits you all round the compass. Well, that might happen to anyone. It's the same with magic. You don't believe in magic, I think. But perhaps this may convince you. Watch now. See what spirals from my desk to Joe. Katanis, Yandra, Asphodel, Yandra, Spiritus, He'll answer your questions, Joe. What do you want me for now? No pertness. Tell this gentleman what Cole Hawlings did with his box. He gave it to somebody to keep for him. I told you that before. Learn civility. To whom did he give it? I don't know. He put spells around it. I couldn't see the person. Let me go. If you're not careful and civil, I'll peg you into the waterfall. Am I nearer to getting the box than I was? Yes. You're very near to it. Shall I get it? You'll have it under your hand today. Now I want to go. I've told you everything. Don't try to dictate to me. This gentleman would like to ask you something. Ask him anything you want to know, Joe. What is... In this box. The way into the past of Europe. I will not be questioned by you. You are not my master. Yes, you will. Anything else, Joe? Uh, yes, there is. If Cole Orlings had hold of this box, why couldn't he go into the past by it and escape? Because the master here has cast a spell on Mr. Hawlings, stopping him leaving the present. Now shut your mouth and let me go. You shall suffer for this. Is there anything more you wish to ask, Joe? Yes. What will win the 1936 Grand National? Kubada by seven lengths. Now I'm going. Go then, my insolent young friend. You will have a lesson, though. You'll stay plugged under the waterfall for seven weeks for insolence. Perhaps that will teach you. No! A general tendency to mutiny, it seems. I must take steps, I see. Uh, come on down, Joe. Through the secret entrance to my zoo. Through the fireplace, Joe. You're not afraid, are you? No. I am, a little, but I've got to follow them somehow. Well, what are you waiting for? It's now or never, before the wall closes up. Nothing! Me! 
made it. I'll have to make sure they don't step on me. Cage number one, Joe. My prize exhibit. And how is the dear bishop? Christmas sermon coming on well? Well, well, well. And will you tell me where the box of delights is? I tell you, ruffian, that I know nothing of any box. These pleasantries had better cease. Tell me where the box is, and they shall cease. And starvation shall cease. You shall have a savory omelette and coffee and rose and honey. <laughs> well, you won't, huh? Water from the well, then, and darkness to meditate upon it. And here, I think, are the cannons minor. Ah, oh, that brings back my Latin. Major, minor, minimus. And are my minor cannons going to tell me of the box? The judge and jury will give you your package. And a heavy package it will be. And you will carry it for a long time. So, you are all stubborn. One of you knows where the box of delights is. Tell me, and you shall be at home within the day. If not, I can last, and the rock will last, but I don't think you will. Uh, by the way, Joe, uh, this cell at the end here, uh, we put the Earl into it, if you remember, because he wouldn't pay the ransom. Seven years ago, I think it was. You remember? I remember well. Just step in, will you? Oh. All right. See if his bones are still there. The ransom didn't come, if you recollect. But I expect the rats did. Or am I wrong? Do you see any bones still? Well, just a skull and a rib or two. Oh, and his marriage ring. Quite so. And now, my dear Joe, with the made-up mind, another time you may not be so brave to tell me that I am making a mistake. Ah, ah, let me out, you hound! Let me out, I'll wring your neck! You mean, and I'll wring your neck. The floor of that cell is a little mm, uneven, but you won't notice it much after the first week. If you please... I think I know where the box is that you want. Oh, Peter. It's Peter. Aha. Uh -huh. Is that so? Where is it? I can't explain it, but I could take you there. If only he could see me. Ah, could you? And give us the slip on the way, no doubt. We are not quite so green. Where is it? If you please. I thought I saw the box just before you scrubbled the Punch and Judy man up on Butler's Down. Ah, well, you thought wrong then. Think again. And think of mushrooms for breakfast. Have you thought of them? Yes, please, sir. Well, that's all the breakfast you'll get. That may teach you not to try to deceive me another time. Now, snivel. <laughs> Can't stop now. I must keep up with Abner. Let me out, Abner. Let me out. I say, I say, old man. A joke's a joke, but don't leave an old pal here in the dark. Not old Joe, Abner. Yes, old Joe. By the way, old Joe, you don't believe in magic, do you? And you don't like wasps either. Hey. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. No, no! Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, he doesn't believe in magic, Joe doesn't. However, take your time. You will presently, Joe. <laughs> Made it. And now to consult my oracle, the bronze head of Damascus. Now what, I wonder? It's a 
head. That's all it is. Just a head. Head, tell me of our plans. Your agents have now captured every clergyman attached to the cathedral, as well as most of the cathedral servants and staff. Is anything going wrong? Yes. You should have begun much later in the day. You have given them time to act against you. Don't criticize me, you slave. <laughs> oh, stop it. Tell me now, what are they trying to do against me? All sorts of things. Mainly telephoning and telegraphing. Trying to get substitutes. Then they will be stopped. Demon! Pestaroth! Cut all the touches to telephone wires and telegraph wires. I go, master. That won't see you very far. Some of the substitute clergy have already started. Demon! Behemoth! Command me, master! Dislocate all railway traffic 20 miles round Tanchester. Jam the points! I go, sir! That won't be much use. They will come by road. Demon! Beelzebub! Your orders, master! Make every road impossible for 20 miles around Tanchester. But stay. That won't be enough. We must make the air impossible, too. Stay here one moment. Endor! What do you want with me, master? I want a storm out of the north and the east with snow. I can't get it. I can't get it. You ask too much. I can only sell a storm for a great sum. A bag of amethysts. Give me a storm from the north and the east, or I will torment you in a way that you will remember for eternity. No! Give me at least half a bag of amethysts, for I need them for a cordial that I am making. A cordial? I will give you a quarter bag. <laughs> now, let me have the storm. Here is a bag. Tied with three strings. Don't open more than two strings, or you'll be sorry. Don't tell me what to do. Be gone. <laughs> Beelzebub, you will open all the strings and flood the cathedral precincts with the deepest snow since wolves ran. Make the drifts eight feet deep round each cathedral door. Away with you. I go, Master. Head, you have interrupted me. You have criticized me. All this establishment seems given over to mutiny. I will have you learn respect. You shall be upside down for a while. I implore you, Master, not... Upside down, I say. Oh, oh, oh. Whimpering. Now listen to me and tell me the truth. Am I to have the box of delights today? You will have it under your hand. To do what I like with? To toss and tumble, it will be your plaything. Then I can open the sluices when I choose. Whenever you choose. Ha ha ha. Who will bring me the box? It will. What is it? Why do you falter? The head. He's seen me small as I am. Oh, he'll betray me now. If. It will come under your hand today. Oh, Head, don't look at me like that. Who will bring me the box? Please. The spells won't let me say. How soon will it be here? It's on its way to you now. Is it near? It is very near. Right. Now mend your manners. Oh, no. Sir Abner is to have the box after all. <laughs> Midnight was soon struck on the cathedral clock. And there will be no service in the cathedral, no! For the cathedral staff will be rolling where Alf the sacred river swishes with organist and boys and bishes down to a sunless sea. The box is coming to me. Raymond Lully will see wisdom. He will grant me the elixir before I go, and with a box of delights, I will be master of the present and the future. 
But I must have a look at my jewels once more. Ah, my treasure chest. Oh, 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 oh dear, lad. I'll get down on the floor. <gasps> oh, you'll see me. Shall I go swift to home? No. No one will believe the things I tell them. And I must stay here if I'm to rescue the others. Strange. That boy, Kay Harker, has come into my thoughts. Why should he come into my mind now? He better not come into my presence. Oh, the Duke's rubies. Worth 30,000 if they're worth a penny. Oh, if I'm not careful, I shall be seen. And the emeralds, 20,000. <laughs> and these are my sapphires. Blue and yellow, my favourite stone. This pearl's as big as I am. There must be a matter of 300,000 pounds in this chest alone. <laughs> I shall retire. It's enough. Even for me. Strange. Strange. That little mildew of a boy is in my thoughts the whole time. I'll put them away. Safe, Abner. The sapphires. The emeralds. <laughs> the pearls. No! No, he's... Uh, ah! Ow! And that's the lot. This is enough for me. Now thrown into a treasure chest with the king's ransom of jewels, I will go home. The box. Where's... Oh, oh it must have fallen out of my pocket when Abner picked me up. Oh, now what? How do I get out of this chest? Now to lock it away from prying eyes. Oh, no! Please! Please! There. <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, happy Abner. Oh, powerful Abner. I will open the sluices now. I've emptied six gallons of petrol in the older parts of the house downstairs where the wood is driest. A wax vesta match will suffice for that. Ah, oh, with what splendor shall I pass from here? A gurgling flood deep down in the caves and a roaring bonfire above. No. Ah, uh, now, Abner, come along. Wait now, wait one moment. It might be just as well if I heard what my merry mariners are up to. They're not exactly the kind of lads to trust further than there's need. I'll tune in the wireless to their mess decks. To his enemies as death chops, but to us as rum chops. Hey! He kindly going to oblige with a song of his own make about one we all want of. Jet <laughs> soul pray silence for our great commander's melodious joy. Hey! Hey! Our Abner is the captain bold, the nimblest ever seen, oh. He thinks to fly with all his gold aboard our submarine, oh. To leave his gang, to wreck or hang, or languish in a jail, oh. While he in his aisle does sit and smile and lives on cake and ale. Oh. Says Abner Brown, I will do you down, and none shall find my trail. Oh. Says Abner Brown, I will do you down, and none shall find my trail. Oh. Mm, that's very clever of rum chops. I've not given him credit for so much wit. So he's guessed that I'm leaving for good. Wait now, there's to be some more. I love the simple mirth of these rough diamonds. Hush. Now, will you all load your pistols and charge your glasses? We'll give the last chorus fiery honors. Are you all ready now? This may be nice for Abner Brown, but not so nice for our soul. And so we plan to let him drown. 
without unpleasant fuss all <laughs> When the submarine is seething green and the water's far from shoal, oh, we'll wait his heels for all his squeals and drop him through a hole, oh. Then bim bam bum for Abner gone and hot rum punch in a bolo. Then bim bam bum for Abner gone and hot rum punch in a bolo. His golden showers will then be ours. Sing, hey, what joy to the soul! So, mutiny even here. I rather feared it. No matter, they shall pay the penalty, and I will go to my island by aeroplane. Number three plane is at all times ready for the voyage, and these clumsy brutes think to pit their wits against me. So be it. They shall pay dearly that I promise them. Very good. And now, now for the great moment, now for my punsa. Much as I've suffered from these fools, I've suffered more from my sweet her, and to make sure of her would be but the work of half an hour. To make the punishment fit the crime. The punishment fit the crime. I'll just see if I can climb up these emeralds and look through the keyhole. You see, my Sylvia, what? Where? Where? Someone's come into the room. It's the ha what man and the pouncer. I told you he was going to put a double cross on us. <gasps> there is the boodle, all packed up. Oh, don't do that. False-hearted, treacherous Abner. Ha <laughs> ha, what? My master key will soon resolve the matter. I'd better hide. But where? What's that? What's a blanket? Oh, no, a piece of jeweler's cloth. <laughs> you see, what? I'll slip under. <gasps> Oh, never shall he look upon them again. Quick, into our suitcase with them. Oh, they're going to fly together. Ah! Oh, wait, you dropped something on the floor. It's nothing, only a bit of jeweler's rag. Leave it. We had better be off. Oh, wait, fill up the chest with coal. Oh, my Sylvia, what an inspiration. <laughs> never was your equal born. Now, Swift, there it is, locked. Beautiful. And no traces left. And now, away, my Charles. <laughs> Wait yet, my Sylvia. He has put old Joe in one of the dungeons. We must set old Joe free first. Oh. Did you ever see his zoo? I never did. Ah, you shall now. Yeah. We'll have time before the police are here. Right. Come along. Well, I'm free. But to what purpose? How could I have lost the box? Oh, there's just a chance that it's been spilt out onto the floor here somewhere. Oh, I do hope it has. Oh, there's no sign of it. If you were the only <gasps> girl in the world, the jewels. <laughs> if I can only swing myself up into his trouser turn up without him stepping on me. You, where on earth has the pumps I got to? If I can pull myself up by uh, this shoelace. Uh, there. And into the turn up. Yes, well, I, I must get going and forgo the pleasure of a fond farewell. <laughs> Nothing else would matter in the world. Now, Raymond, or Cole, my merry old soul. <laughs> I have only one thing to say to you. I want your elixir. How about it? No. No, nothing that you can offer shall buy the elixir from me. You are unfit to possess it. You realize the alternative. If I am not to have the elixir, be sure that you will not profit by it. You see this iron wheel in the rock face? It works sluices, by which I can flood these cellars at will. I think the elixir would hardly preserve you from twenty feet of water, chained as you are. Whether it will preserve me or not remains to be seen. But the elixir will stay my secret alone, and will never preserve you. So, 
You remember, of course, that I am offering to bargain. The box of delights for your elixir is a fair exchange. You have nothing with which to bargain. You say that you have my box or will have it. You are wrong. You will not have it. I most absolutely refuse to bargain with you in any way whatsoever. I defy you, Abner Brown. Very good, then. In any case, there is no need to continue the conversation. When I turn this loose wheel, water will begin to enter the tunnels. You still refuse? I do. I must absolutely refuse to bargain with you in any way. Very good, then. The water shall enter. Hey, wait one moment. I confess I do set a little store by your elixir of life. You are not ignorant of magic. If you see my helper, you will hear from him that your box of delights will be mine before midnight. That may convince you. Katanas Fiandra. Asphodel Fiandra. Spiritu. some of the insolence from you, it would seem. Now, tell this gentleman the truth. The box that I search for, shall I not have it before midnight? No. You told me that I should have it. I didn't. I said you'd have it under your hand, and you've had it under your hand. You've had it under your hand for something like an hour this afternoon, and you didn't know. Now... It isn't under your hand, and it won't be under your hand again. And you don't know where it is, and you'll never know where it is. Tell me instantly where it is. I won't tell you another thing more. You could peg me under the waterfall, or melt me in the fire, or bury me, or blow me through the winds, yet I'll never tell you another thing. Except that you had the box and didn't know it, and now won't have it again ever. So that's what I call squish to you. Get you back to your waterfall, and you will stay there for seven years. Ah! No. no. Spirit boy, look at the ring on my finger. Sir? You are released. I'm free! Free! I shan't be pegged under the waterfall, Abner. For I've been set free, see, from you and yours. Free! You had the box under your hand and you didn't know it. And now you'll never get it again. A jolly good squish to you. Squish, Abner! I'm free! I'm free! You see? You have deceived yourself. Very well. I have other helpers beyond any power of yours. I am not to have your elixir, it seems. And I am not to have your box. Very well. But I shall have something. And that is revenge on you. For I am going to drown you, coal haulings, like a rat in a trap. You hear? The sluice is working beautifully. There's a great head of water in the lake. Thirty feet of damp back flood water is coming after you, and it won't take very long to reach you. And now I shall set off with my little earnings to a place of rest and beauty. My last act before I leave will be to drop a wreath down the sluice for you and your clerical friends. Sleep well. Cool. <sighs> uh, no help. No hope. Mr. Hallings. The new magic is one. Mr. Hallings. Huh? Is that you, Master Hucker? If I were you, I wouldn't keep that size, my boy. Mr. Hallings, I've lost your box. Uh -huh. I had it. 
It was shaken out of my pocket somewhere, and now I can't get back to my proper size. Well, that's a pity. You're not much bigger than my thumb. Do you remember the time, sir, when the wolves were very close to Sea Kings, yet you got away? Yeah, I do indeed. Could you do something of that sort now? Well, I'm not so sure, Master Cave. Wait, wait, wait. Have you such a thing as a pencil and a bit of paper? No, I haven't. Oh, that's a pity. Wait, 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 wait. You see, in the corner of my coat that they took from me, I, I can't reach it. I'm, I'm changed. <laughs> if you can rumpage in the pockets, you may find a bit of lead that was broken off and, and a crumpled sheet or two. I, I've got them. Good, 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 Master Harker. Now, are you a good hand at drawing? Oh, no, I'm not very good. I can draw horses going from right to left and trains going a bit the other way. Well, suppose you draw a horse, Master Harker, coming to bite these chains in two. Do you mean coming head on? Mm. I don't think I've ever drawn horses head on. I always make them look so like cows. Well, well try it. It, it. it doesn't have to be special. Just from the heart. Yes, that's the way, Master Harker. There you are. Uh, oh, stand that paper upon its end so that we may take a good look at it. Right. Now watch the paper, Master Harker, as I face it. I'd like to keep that drawing. It's the best I've ever done. Watch. Watch. It's coming. A real horse. Look. Stand in there, boy. Stand in there, boy. Now, Master, hang on to the mane while, while I'm out. Oh, we will see if we can get out of this. Right the lock, my sturdy stallion. Right the lock. Oh, too late to go this way. The water's coming in. Back, back, back. The magic horse is a fiery steed and can't abide water, which puts out fire, as you know. Not too much time for the look of things. The water's coming in very fast. We, we, we must dismount. Before the water touches the horse. Come on, come on, come on. I'll carry you. The water? It's coming. <laughs> Steady, my good horse. It'll soon be over. <laughs> You've served as well. <sighs> now, quickly, Master K, we must proceed once more as before with this paper and pencil. Draw me a long, roomy boat with a man in her, sculling her, and a bunch of keys. I'm not very good at boats. I've never drawn a man sculling. Draw now. The water is already up to my old knees. Well, here's the boat. And then here's the man sculling. Now, this is the bunch of keys. Good. Right now, let me set the paper afloat. Sluice mouth has given way. That's so, but the boat is coming to. You see, with the boatman. I'll take you aboard, Master King. There, there. Now, perhaps we'd better see if we can save some other prisoners. Send us on our way, boatman. We haven't too much time. The water's coming in. wonder of them. And look, there, on that ledge, something shining. Pull over, Bowman. It must be one of Agnes Diamonds. Mostly it's not a diamond. It's a box. However did it get there? The oh, what man must have dropped it. That's what it is. What quick eyes, Master Harker. Now, let me see if I can reach it. <laughs> Nearly. I can almost. Yes. I have it. Here, Master Key, press the button to the center. There. Yes, that's rather better. 
A normal-sized crewman is more useful than a Tom Thumb. <laughs> Forward, boatman. Now you stand on that side, Master K, and shove her off the rocks. I'll do the same on this side. Look! There's Rat in the water. Oh, pity your poor drowning man. An old naval pensioner would give his youth for the empire. Help me drag him aboard, Master K. He will guide us to find the prisons. <laughs> That's what comes of having cisterns what burst. I suppose you ain't got a bit of bacon rind you could give a poor man? No, we haven't. Oh, there's nobody keeps bacon rind now. I'm cold! Alf! Up here! There's a hole in the roof. Give us your paw! Up it, Uncle! Coming! Oh. Well, that's got rid of him. There are the cells. Master K! It's Caroline Louisa. It's all right. We're coming to get you out. The key is Master K. On the bow. Careful, Caroline Louisa. Oh, I'm afraid you're sopping wet and half frozen. Oh. Oh, but we'll soon get you to some dry and warm things. Do you happen to know the way to the other prisons? I don't indeed. They weren't anywhere near here. Master K! There's someone coming! It's the bishop! And Peter! Oh. Master K! The dean and the whole cathedral staff! On board! Welcome! Everyone on board! How on earth did you get out of your cells? Oh, we've been out some time. A man and a woman came down to let out a friend of theirs called Joe. They went away with him, but after a minute, Joe ran back with the keys and let us all out. Where are we, can you tell us? Down in the heart of the Chester Hills, Your Grace. Oh. We'll get you out before long. Boatman onward! Oh. Where are the others? What others? The, the bell ringers, the choir boys, and at least half the choir. Shout, everybody. Huh? If they've not all been drowned, they may hear us. Yes. Hello. 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 Isn't that singing? Oh, hello. What? what quick ears, Master Hucker. Singing it is way along there in the darkness. Heave all together now, for they must be sorely pressed. Come on! And mind you don't swap the boat as you get on board. Lively with you now. There's a ticket. Come on! Are you all on board? Yes, this is the lot of us. Right. We'll push off then. Upstream. These galleries are almost full to the roof now. But look! They are ahead! At the far end of the tunnel! Moonlight! You'll never get up a waterfall like that! Where the salmon can go, man can go. But how, Mr. Hawley? Swift, Master K. Of course! The Box of Delights! It will not be very swift, I fear, with the boat and so many people, but it will be steady. Everyone, link together. Yes. Join hands with Master K in the centre. Oh, yes. 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 yes, Ready, Master K. Press to the left for swift. I am, Mr. Hawley, sir. Nothing's happening. I can feel the whole boat shaking, Kay. It's as if someone is trying to pluck us out of the water. It's lifting. It's starting to lift. Oh, it's a miracle. Flying. Where? Look, there's Abner, working the sluice. He hasn't seen us. He hopes not to drown us all. Oh, this thing is jammed. It ought to be wide, but it's only half open. Open with you. Is this cock that's jammed? Open. Open! <laughs> She's moving! She's moving! There she goes! <laughs> wheel, wheel, pull off the sluice, 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 let in the stream, 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 cover them deep, so they won't sing hymns in the morning. You're too late, Abner! Too late! Hurt! And look, Abner, up there! Hey!
I'll get even with you. He's fallen into the waterfall. Forever and forever, farewell, Cassius. We've made it. We've made it. What's going on? Here's another of them, hiding in the boathouse! The police arresting the gang! Halt there! In the boat! Halt there! We've got you covered! Who are you? It's it's the Bishop of Tatchester and all the prisoners! Why, is that you, your grace? Yes! That's the word there that the bishop saves. Oh, I am glad to see you safe, Master Harker. You trust the law, Master Harker. Sometimes she's slow, but always she is sure. <laughs> now, I must go to my men here. But uh, if you will shove your boat over there by that little bathing box, I think you will get ashore there without being sunk in the snow. Uh, it's after 11. We'd better push on to Hope under Chester's and telephone from there. It would take us all night to flounder through these drifts. Well, it's very disappointing. I am afraid that after all there's no chance of our holding up at night service in any church in the diocese, let alone the cathedral. I am not so sure, Your Grace. Mm. I think by this and that we needn't give up hope yet. <laughs> Listen all. Oh. oh, you can hear the bells of nine churches ringing for Christmas. Well, that one with the tenor bell that needs recasting is Norton Crucis. The old Father Goodman has rung that bell for 49 Christmas Eves, and this is his 50th. I can hear other bells. Sleigh bells. Reindeer? Look, they're not reindeer. They're lions. Oh, my God. Oh, and that's not Father Christmas. Oh, Mr. Hawlings, it's the Lady of the Oak Tree. <laughs> Get in, Bishop. I can take half of you in this sleigh. I must start before my team starts quarrelling with the other team. Oh, another sleigh. It's Han the Hunter. And unicorns. They always told me they never existed. Hello, Master K. Jump in, everyone. There will be room for all of you. Would you like a hand, Mr. Williams? Oh, thank you, Kay. I say, how fast do you look, Kay? We're flying! Uh, they hate being beaten by the lions. Through the cathedral! Come this way. Pass in, brothers, to St. Michael's door. We have cleared the way for ye. Where are these monks from, Mr. Hollings? Uh, these are the monks of St. Michael's Abbey, Master Harker. But the Abbey was destroyed centuries ago. Uh, they've returned. For on such a Christmas Eve, when help is so badly wanted, what one of their souls would keep away? Hmm? They've all come for the glory of St. Michael's Abbey. Pass in, my Lord Bishop. Mine, please, if you could pass to the side. Ah, it is Winters, the electrician. Uh, can you give us lights in here? Oh, welcome back, my Lord Bishop. Oh, welcome indeed, thank you. But, but as to the lights, I, I can't give you so much as one. No, not a light, Your Grace. Whether it's the fuses or something worse, I can't at the moment say. Yes, it's 15 minutes to midnight. Just a quarter of an hour to robe and get the bells and the lights and the organ going. I wonder, will that snow shoveler very kindly lend me his lantern? Oh, oh thank you so much. I am Joe Stalwart. We were all here ready to carry on in case of need. <laughs> we are so glad that you are back, my Lord Bishop. If you'll allow us, we'll go up to light the choir. Uh, there's someone by the great door seems to be looking for you, Master Harker. Oh? Oh, it's Arnold. Mr. Hollings, look. It's Arnold and Tubby. <laughs> This is the feast of the nativity. 
Christmas Eve! <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Arnold. I'm so pleased to see you. Then I'm back in Anno Domini. Yes, to be sure, Arnold. And you must have a sup from my bottle that I brought all the way from Spain for you. And here is your box of delights that you've been parted from for so long. No, no! Keep it. What? Now that I'm back in Anno Domini, I'll stay here. But first, you must take some drops from this bottle hmm? that came from a temple captured by Alexander. Ooh. See. I will put four drops of this fragrant oil into the censer. Watch now. <gasps> it's brighter than the electricity. Hmm. So... Alexander found it burning in that temple beyond the Gedrosian wastes. It will burn for seven hundred years, being the oil of eternity. We must open the great door. Help me, Kate. Bishop's in his grave by this paper. Right. A happy sight. A blessed sight, Kate. All those people coming here to sing. Less than a moment ago. It is time, Kate. What, Mr. Hollings? It is time. Hey, wake up, wake what? up. What? You've been sound asleep. Welcome home for the holidays. Come on, hand me your suitcases. Here they are. That's it. Is that everything? Yes. Come along then. Did you have a nice dream? Yes, I... Just a minute, Caroline Louisa. I seem to have lost my ticket. I see that my Barney dog has made friends with you at first sight. That's the time, Master Harker. The lightings are made. In the final part of The Box of Delights by John Macefield, dramatized by John Peacock, with music by Neil Brand, Donald Sindon played Abner Brown, Lionel Jeffries, Cole Hawlings, Spike Milligan, Arnold of Toddy, and Celia Imry, Sylvia Daisy Pouncer. Kay Harker was played by Alistair Souk, Peter by Benjamin Guy, Mariah by Kimberly Staines, Jemima by Alyssa Mason, and Susan by Holly Vogt. Simon Treves was Joe, David Holt, Charles, Paul Jenkins, the Spirit Boy, David March, Rat, Richard Tate, Rum Chops, Jonathan Keeble, Demon Beermoth, Stephen Critchlow, Demons, Astaroth and Beelzebub, and Zulema Dean, the Witch of Endor. Gavin Muir was Hearn the Hunter and the Bronze Head of Damascus, David Collins, the Bishop of Tachester and the Pirate Chief, Jill Graham, the Lady of the Oak Tree, Geoffrey Matthews, the Police Inspector, John Hartley, the Dean, Jane Whittenshaw, Caroline Louisa, Sandra James Young, Ellen, and Roger May, Joe Stalwart. Other parts were played by members of the cast. Technical presentation was by Roger Danes, Tim Sturgeon, Rosamond Mason, Colin Guthrie, and Hilary Carruthers. The Box of Delights was directed by David Blount. <laughs>